Oh, welcome back, everybody. It's a Thursday. It's Glider yeah. Live. We are here talking about things yeah. that we talk about. What the hell's going on? I, my, my my ears are getting blown out. Oh, which one is it? Yellow. Perfect. That? Thank good. you. Thank welcome you. back, everybody. Such a diva. I was asking you nicely to turn down. You're like, no, no, I'm good. No. I'm good. I thought you were going to switch the microphone thing with me because oh, it smells no, so no, bad. No, no, no. Oh, and then you got sidetracked with that one. I'm just the, talking to the mic. I, I, no, I said I was going to switch with her, her the pad with yeah. her, you know, because I don't have yeah. much. Yeah. I'll I'll really, switch, I'll I realize pads. now because Riley does this all the time. I'm not going to allow you to do it. You got to do it too. You got to you got to talk yeah, into this. the microphone. Ew. All right, so listen. Smell that, <laughs> Brett. Smell that microphone because let me Dorina said it stinks. Way better. Does it stink? I don't. You don't see, see it. See, I've got allergies. Maybe, Thank so you. maybe, maybe it's better for me to take that. Is one. it bad? Uh, I wouldn't is say it, bo. This is just bad breath. This is bad this breath. This is just bad breath. Because you were smelling your pits. You thought it was your pits. Yeah, I was like, it smells like body odor. The yeah. time Roxy had it, and Thursdays. I smelled it. That was rough. Is it Thursday? No, Thursday mornings. I don't know who the last podcast in here is. Yeah. On on Wednesdays. Wednesdays. But but Thursdays stinking up the Thursday drink. mornings Cody, has been rough. Who's the last show on 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 Wednesdays? Give me a second here. Please bring that up. Calendar. Who was the last show yesterday? I believe. Who has bad breath? <laughs> I believe it's Action Guys, but I could be oh, wrong. Oh, you're right. But those guys don't. don't I, have they, bad I've breath. never smelled their breath before. They don't have bad they breath. They were the last show in here yesterday. Mm, there I don't, you go. I don't there think. has to be a spray for these things, yeah. right? That we. Well, I did, and I got yelled at because I did the Febreze and I was shorted out the mic. Oh, so no, I mean, you got to remove them. Why would you do that? So I was done with it. I was Christian over. just takes Windex and sprays yeah. it in the yeah. mic. Is that working? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Um, yeah, guess what I watched last night, Darina? Probably something that's not as good as a thing. Guess what I watched. What do you guys think? Um, do you think it was what, what they think it is? It's not the thing. What do you think? It's not the thing. It was animals eating each other. <laughs> I watched yeah, last night. I don't know how. Oh, yeah. You, this is your fault. This is your fault. Because How you, is this my this fault? This is your fault. You posted uh, a video of uh -huh. a big anaconda. It was disgusting, yes. It was huge. I had to share it because I was so horrified. Right? It was well, like Michael Fassbender's penis and shame. Yeah, but not pretty. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. it was moving around. Disgusting. And, and apparently the video was altered, so it was bigger and thicker and longer right. than it was, but it was still disgusting. Well, it that didn't matter. put me down a rabbit hole. So right. then what I did next. I love those rabbit it holes. It was the best. So Literally. the only so thing gross. that was missing was it was a bowl. Oh. I wish I had a bowl. I didn't have a bowl. Um, mm -hmm. But I was there and I was watching. Watching, I started watching anaconda videos, but then I started watching <laughs> dogs eating snakes, and I saw dogs like going after cobras and Whoa. stuff. And I was the way they were maneuvering each other. And then I don't know how I got here, but the one that fascinated fascinated me the most were animals that that got the best of uh, alligators. Well, there is one uh, number. The number it was a jaguar. Oh, the, the jaguar. The jaguar. jaguar. My awesome. hero. Yeah. Dude, this so jaguar cool. grabs this gator mm -hmm. by the throat, mm -hmm. kills it, rips it out of the and river, and then climbs up the motherfucking thing, like the the, yep. the mountain or whatever it is, and he's the, just the got, embankment. The, right, the river. he's got on the bank, and he's just sitting there, just like that's my meal, bitches. Yeah. Yep. And I was like, yes, it is. You earned that. Cats are the best. Dude, I mean, They're so cool. that's that was why... a cool one. But the, the other one, the other one was otters. Oh, otters were oh, fighting yeah. croc uh, crocodiles or alligators and, and snakes, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the otters are. It was. It was. It was pretty. Yeah, they're tougher crazy. than they look. Yeah. I follow an otter on Instagram called Cartel the Otter. <laughs> Who doesn't? He's right. adorable. Yeah. Otters or she's are the best. adorable. Yes. Then if you go, so real quick, remember a couple weeks ago we talked about that woman jumping. I would the hold jaguar on a second. Cage? You don't follow me on Twitter, but you follow <laughs> an otter. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. You sense. tweet like once a year. <laughs> well, yeah. Hey, so that's nice. Yeah, I'm yeah, good follow. to my. Fans, yeah. I don't overwhelm. It is That's true, though. <laughs> someone, true. You, someone to follow that wants, you don't get bombarded with stuff. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. I'm still not getting a in the day. Anyway, um, the, we talked about the jaguar. The woman member with the selfie of the jaguar that got eaten by, the, like, got attacked by the jaguar in the zoo. Yes. Remember? Yes. Then you watch that video of the jaguar eating the alligator. That should be like played when you're going into Jurassic Park. Of like, don't touch the don't dinosaurs. go near this. Because don't this, go near the jaguars. Because jaguars can kill alligators 100%. and it can definitely kill you. Or you could just not be a fucking dumbass and right. not yeah, get exactly. it. Right. Like, right. why would you go anywhere inside a zoo it, it, cage? No sense. <laughs> no, no, no sense. But, so uh, no. but, but anyways, it. you're watching animals eat each other yes. when you could be watching that while watching the thing. Yeah. I wouldn't do the thing. It would, it would take away Spoilers. from the movies. But but I, what I but the other thing, and I always go back to this clip, and I don't know what it is. It is it is a bit sadistic, and I'll and I'll admit it. The zebra one. When the, the, did you ever see the zebra get eaten by the uh, by the, by the gator? Cats? No, oh. by the crocodile. Oh, no. I think I've seen it where she's like kind of just like by the the creek side, and the gator comes up and no, rips no, it no. apart. No, 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 no. It the, the, this 
crew of, of zebras are trying to make it, and uh -huh. people are filming them, and they go, uh-oh, uh-oh, and you see the thing go, ah, ah, and it's kicking it off, you know, it's kicking, and, and then it, it's fighting its way out, and it fights its way out, but its intestines just fall right out. <laughs> oh, man. And it, just, and it looks, and it's trying to like pick itself back up. It's like, it's over, dude. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's, it's, uh, you're about to, you, you know, you're about Bubba to. It's Bubba and Forrest Gump, like, Oh, it's <laughs> it, it's over and the but poor sadder. thing. You, no, it's super. It's, animals, it's yeah. super sad. Yeah. And you're just like the thing has no idea. It's yeah. over. Yeah. Like you're gonna and be lion meal pretty soon. And nature's so messed up, but yeah. I can't stop watching it. I so know. actually, this is probably the only thing you watch that that's okay actually that it. I'm okay with you not watching the thing. Okay. But, yeah. right. That and the voice. No, <laughs> definitely not the voice. Would you watch Big Brother? No. no. Cool. Same I don't. I I don't like any reality TV except for Queer Eye. Oh, yeah, queer and he loves it. That's yeah. my jam. He yeah. loves it. Yeah, because he apparently see that's surprising. Because the reason why he likes it so much is because it makes you feel good. Yeah. If and we you like were, that? if the rest I of like the world, I like feeling good sometimes. Yeah. I feel like you like to be miserable. That thing makes me feel good. Actually, that's not true. That's not even no. myself. That you're not a miserable person no, at all. No, I'm a you happy like dark, person. You like dark shit. Yes, but you're actually pretty happy. I like dark stuff. I like horror yeah. and sci-fi because it makes you think about the human condition. And it's like it's like self-help therapy. Yeah. No, I, that's I, why I, I take that back. You're actually one of the more happier people. A friendly dark person. Yes. I, there's no. That's yes. no. I mean, you you can you can you can tease, but it's not biting and it's well, not you know. Yeah. That's, well, unless you piss me off, then in, I bite. Well, I, yeah. I'm not in a certain do that. in a certain sense, though, you make a very good point. In like one of the goth people that I went to high school with was the sweetest human being yeah. alive. Yeah. She just happened to like, like dressing in all no, no, in black. Yeah. And I heard myself say that immediately, and I had an argument inside my head, and <laughs> it was that's not true. Yeah, she's actually the happiest person. I I sent some texts to Riley. I mean, this is juvenile hour, and I'm okay with it. Um, I want to. I want to show you these the texts that I, that I sent to write. Are voice they text. as entertaining as the thing, or Probably better? Not. All right, so this is this is this is what I There's sent. There's no Riley. way any of Christian's because, texts because you, are you know what than I, you know thing. what I normally send Riley is farts, farts, yeah, like yeah. Not, not just sounds. And and so and like last night I was like, you know what? We're yelling I'll, at him about guests. Yeah, but this is this is, this is what I sent Riley last night. Why are you holding your phone Wait, like to that? The, to the microphone. Him? Is, oh, that's why. Hold on. Yeah. So last night I was thinking. I was thinking. How can I? <laughs> awesome. It's like, what awesome is? work, dude. Like, no, I know. This is good. Great, 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 great content. Great. Hey, for the Angelina and Jolie story, I was thinking that if we opened up with this, now it cuts off. So. Sorry about that. <laughs> Stupid. Well oh, and, and, then, and then I said, and then I said, I'm this. Just kidding. I think for the Angelina and Jolie story, if we are able to start from the beginning. Because <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know that now when I Riley, you in the booth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here, Christian. I'm, I'm right so, here for you. I got yeah. you, but I got you last night. Yeah, you did. Okay, you did. Yeah, yeah. it was I, a it was a good change up to the <laughs> usual fart noise right. that just comes in randomly. This one had some context yes, to it. Because it Riley, Riley, do you ignore? Or do you actually reply to him? No, because I, just, no, I responded that, with a with I believe a ha ha. Because before before you answer that, because now when he sees the voice text. I figure, and tell me if I'm wrong here, Riley. Right away, he sees the first voice, and like, all right, it's gonna be a fart. Yeah. Yep. And then, yep. so when he pushes play, and he's like, oh, it's yep. not a fart. Yeah. It's Angelina Jolie. So I, I cut it in half to pretend that I was. Oh wait, uh, sorry about that. And then when he got blasted with it, he was like, he said, oh wait a minute. You so, hustled him. Yeah. I'm glad you yeah. broke that down because I was so confused. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get hustled? It's like a ten year old. So I yes. played a trick yeah. on him. No, no, no like I, get it. I like get it. It's like Paulie Walnuts. It's like Paulie Walnuts. Do you hear what I said to him? You hear what I said to him? I sent the fart to him. Do you hear that? Are you the fart? Yeah, yeah. What You're I did is I, I sent it to him. I sent it to him. You're such a dad. Yeah, yeah. I sent him the so fart. So proud of yourself. I have an yeah. uncle. Like, did you hear that? You hear I said, and the voice text, <laughs> got it. I fooled him. He yeah, thought it was going to yeah. be one thing, and then I sent the fart. Yeah, yeah, he got yeah, it? Yeah. I got it. Yeah. It's like, I have an uncle that will be like, hey, you ever heard the story about me at that bar in Oakland? I'm right. like, yeah. He's like, okay, so here's how the story yeah, 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 goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, ah, yeah. God. Yeah, it's a good one. So, well, good. I'm glad that, because I made him laugh on it. Now, now every time you get a voice text, I got to try to figure out a new way to do it. So, <laughs> speaking of the thing and farts, uh -huh. um, some people on the Facebook group were mentioning that there's going to be a screening of the thing coming up. Are you guys going to go? No. No. <laughs> I'm going to buy you tickets and then you're not going to go. Well, it'll probably happen. Yeah. <sighs> it's right by your house, too. Cool. Darina brought it up, and I, I told Frosty last night I wasn't going to bring it up, but I have to bring up something that happened last night. Oh, you are so going to? I'm going to bring it up. All right, go ahead. Because it was fun, okay? Right. So we had a lot a lot of cool fans and a lot of people come out to the screening of Hannah last night. Yes. And there was a technical difficulty, nobody's fault, it just like things like that happen, happen, whatever. At the Arclight? Uh, at the Arclight, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And Thad and I legit thought it was just going to be me, Dennis, and Frosty in the audience, but there was like there was like 100 people there, I would at, say. At, okay, good. And Arclight. Uh, all Collider know, fans? Not all Collider fans, but there was like some Amazon I people see. that were invited and stuff like that. 
like that. But so the the sound and the and the visual was like a second and a half delay. No. So it was almost like you're watching Godzilla. Shit happens, technical difficulties, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is what it is. So if, if, if the guy comes out, the projections comes out, he's like, give us about 10 minutes. And Thad just he goes, do some stand up. I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, just try out some bits. And I was like, okay. Because I was sitting next to Thad, right? So I get up and I just start like doing crowd work with the, do? at the crowd. It was a lot of fun, right? Good. Like there was a lot. And so You're I like, did I think you're a radio host? Basically. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. are we going to have Collider fans yeah. and people clapping? I was like, any Collider TV talk fans? Less class. Any Collider Live fans? More class. Was Rebecca yeah. Ford there? Rebecca Ford was not <laughs> yeah. there. But I did tell the Rebecca Ford story. Oh, Oh, you did. I was like, the last time I was in the theater, I'd gone to see us, and this girl just stands up and screams, no spoilers! And I was like, okay. (laughs) I was like, don't worry, I'm not going to spoil anything. Uh, It was Rebecca Ford. It wasn't. It wasn't. Because she would have screamed, no no spoilers. (laughs) Why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you here? She would have just walked away. (laughs) Uh, Oh, no, not one of those, uh, was basically her first response when I told her. Uh, Which is most people's response. I don't like how she described you as a large man. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's what my wife said, too. I feel you're you're, you're bulkier than me, but I feel we're similar in size. I I think she she probably just meant adult man. Yeah. yeah. Because Mm, she was was surprised that you you were behaving like a child. I I mean, it has set me. A grown man. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, grown man. That's what she, didn't she say like a very large adult man? A large adult man. You're a fatty. I did eat a $46 pizza in Seattle, so, you know. It was delicious, though, so it was worth it. It was fantastic, it was. Um... But I, I, you know, the, I sent out the Rasika Photoshop and I put it on my Instagram my and it blew real. up, my which was, was hysterical. Real. Yeah, yeah. And then I told the, like the Toby Maguire story because people were oh, like, last night? yeah, last yeah. night it was because we were talking about like famous people in junkets and I, whatever. It right. kind of like, you know, went down a wormhole and the one person, like people were, at, so I just started doing like anybody, you got any questions? You want to do like a little question and answer? Da, 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 da. Ask some trivia questions, whatever. And this one guy was like, who's the worst celebrity you ever met? And I was like, hands down, Toby Maguire. So I told the Toby <laughs> Maguire story. And this woman who I I didn't know. She was like, oh, we were here for the little screening, but there was too many people, so they put us in here. And I was like, oh, great. <laughs> you guys don't know who we are. Who right, right, is. Right. And she goes, "I first thing I'm doing when I'm going home is I'm Googling Toby Maguire, and I'm looking for your interview. And I was like, oh, that's great. That's great. She's like, I hope you do terrible. And she oh, walked away. Wow. I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I actually That's watched great. it recently. I, I remembered it the, the when interview? I was on some YouTube spiral or whatever. Yeah. I went, oh, I gotta watch that yeah. Google thing. It wasn't. I mean, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> but it's, you were tr- you were trying. It, it, I, I feel it was more on his end of just being tired and just not. Now I don't hear great know. things about him, and I'll always try to stick up for my guys. Not this. Time. <laughs> <laughs> not not <laughs> this. Time. No, no. This, no, it's, it, it was, it's, it's not that it was a bad interview. Yeah. It was that Makuga starts off, and he's just like, I hated you in this movie. Yeah. Are you yeah. serious? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, pretty much. But it was supposed to be like a joke. I like, got your point. Yeah. You know what my point was. But, it, but it, is that the first time you're interviewing, yes. though? That kind of sucks for him. Like, well, I would be like, who are you? You see him change. You? His yeah. whole demeanor changes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. He goes from being like, hey, how's it going? To, I hate this person. There's yeah. a, there a lot totally. of, like, this... Yeah, when answering the question, he did not, want, feel he like did not was, want to be there. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and also too, I mean, you, the the lead up to the to the question, I've told the story a billion times, but she told me don't ask any questions about Spider Man, nothing fun, no rapid fire. Like, like yeah. the publicist got right. in my she ear, and I was hand, like, she put handcuffs on you. Totally, yeah, and yeah. that's when I was like, well, here we go. I'll I'm tell just you though, light it up. My my opinion on the whole thing's changed after like uh, knowing more about Molly's game. Show, totally. Yeah. So yeah. I you know, I don't care. Yeah. It's like you know whatever. Uh, because apparently he's not a very nice person. Oh, from well. from what from if you believe again, very similar to what you're saying with the conversation yesterday as you were yeah. listening. Yeah. Um, I don't know Toby McGuire. I've never met never met Toby McGuire. I just know people, and I've heard things from from you know the uh, Molly's game and things of that nature. So I, you, I just, the, the, this industry is small. Yes. Like you hear if, pe- if people don't behave politely with right. other people. All I, I know is that he owns a house and he doesn't cry when he writes his rent check, so I hate him. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that's all it is. That's all I know. So you don't like him because yeah, of what it makes sense. Like <laughs> so you've been listening to this show? Uh, some of it. Some of it. Some of it. And 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 you guys have been doing a good job. Oh, you've thank been entertaining me. And then half of it, I'm like, oh, nobody's there. I should be there to shut them up because they're wrong about stuff. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. So that part is frustrating. Good. Like what? Like the Zack Snyder stuff. Oh. 
Oh, Everybody really, in the car is right I, now is like, nah. I think that it's more, I <laughs> yeah. think you have more of an issue with maybe Riley and, and uh, Roxy. Well, it's because, not, it's, but, my it, opinion, but it's not my just Sex Snyder, though. It's not just Sex Snyder, right, though. But, I just, but for that, okay. but for that particular thing, because I think when McCoo and I are on the same page, we don't care. Yeah. Right, no, 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 and I, yeah. I don't care as much as most people, right. but it's not just about him. It's about any time that there is an article that comes out about anyone, right? Yeah. Uh, most of the time, as we've talked on the show, the people just read the headline, right. right? And they don't, or they see a two second clip of somebody speaking, and they don't have and they actual don't context sure, sure, sure. and read and do research to see what the actual person's right. saying. And then everybody on social media freaks out. And that's and kind yells. of what we're going into yesterday so, about what the culture is in general. Right, today, exactly. Yeah. And so, but but in in this case, it's like you guys were talking about why did he say this one sentence, right? And so I'm the Batman thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like it's just one sentence that he said, and everyone's freaking out, and everyone's making Twitter jokes, and some of them are funny. Yeah. But I, I just think that you, we all have to be careful into like not having an opinion right away when yeah. we haven't read everything. I don't about disagree this. with you. My thing is with that whole thing. I'm not gonna be completely honest. I just tuned out. Right, like right. when every, I can't even tell you. Who said right. what in that room? Because I was I was so bored by no, the fact. No, I get it. I mean, when you're talking, I tune out too. So, right. Yeah. What did he yeah. just say? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but I yeah, I just I get, blacked out for a second. Right. That was so but, nice. Right. But what I'm what I you know what I'm what I'm saying is that it's just that if the guy and, and whatever it might have been with Watchmen, but yep. let's say let's just say yep. he said that I believe that Batman should kill people. Right. Which is not what, it, what he said though. I know, but yep. let's say he did. Okay. Then he thinks Batman kills people, yeah. and that was his version. Right. Now there'll be someone be... else that doesn't do that. Hey, thanks, but what do you care? Why, why what do anyone... you care if Batman kills people? I mean, <laughs> Batman's gonna kill someone. I he mean... goes into a room with guns and belts and everything. I mean, he's come gonna on, kill somebody. He's got a bomb. He's got a ring. I mean, figure it out. Somebody killed his parents. And watch with this. And watch with that sidekick. Put on some pants. Wait, his somebody... car has bombs on it. Somebody killed Batman's parents. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> come on. How many I times we gotta see this guy's parents die? He's got a mom named Martha. So does <laughs> Superman. Come on. What's the deal with Batman? <laughs> but mine wow. was the worst Seinfeld. I would. Yeah. I know. I come in. What's the deal? I don't think. I think mine was rivaling yours. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. not gonna do it. Come I'm on, to like a Mexican Jew. Come oh, on, Dorena. I cannot wait. Because, because, Why you wear all black? I mean, <laughs> it's not even Halloween. <laughs> What's the deal? <laughs> What's the deal with Dorena? She's happy. She's sad. I mean, come on, figure it out. Is Put she, on some colors. <laughs> is she dark? Is she a dark person? We don't know. I mean, come on. Don't be racist. <laughs> she walks um, into a room everybody's a little scared figure it out come on <laughs> why wow. do you hate children because <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're terrifying yeah. they are um, <laughs> how but, many people are in your basement you know what you know what reminded me though she said that something. went really long good job guys <laughs> thank you, you did what it. reminded me though something that she said there is a moment that happens that I told you about that I don't want to spoil. For, and at, what? At the free for all. Uh, and it airs tomorrow on the Schmodown channel. Do I know about this? Yes. Okay. I texted you and you yes. said it's the funniest thing you ever. <laughs> yes. Everybody here was here. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And it is one of the moments of the year. It is a comedy moment that we will be talking mm -hmm. about on this show in depth. Again, yeah. so bummed for this reason and this reason uh -huh. only. I mean, I wanted to be there for the fans and compete yeah. and lose just like everybody else. But. Uh, not being able to see to be there. It was because amazing. Because I've been there for every other JTE moment uh, in history. Uh, uh, oh, crap. Oh, man. Yeah. Did you just mess up? Yeah. yeah. Did Aww. I? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> at least they all know. At least they all know now. But Spoilers. What I will tell you is there is a moment <coughs> that happens and the, the energy in the room is so bizarre so at first because this thing happens and at first it's just like, nope. And then the next person goes in like, then you take in what was said, mm -hmm. and the audience starts to build from a slow laugh to a middle laugh mm -hmm. to a huge laugh to people holding their sides and hiding their faces. <laughs> it is, it is absolutely <laughs> insane, yeah. and it is the mo it, it is it'll be a moment that lives in infamy yeah. in the Shmona forever. So, and that goes up uh, tomorrow for two parts. It's going to be two parts, mm -hmm. and it'll be tomorrow on the Shmona channel. So, if you haven't. I have been. I'm Are you uploading time. both parts at the same time? Yeah. Okay. So, but I think that'll be. I think the first one will air at like one or two, and then the second one will air at like four thirty. Let people watch the first gotcha. part. But what I've been getting, and I got this a lot yesterday, and I was excited to see it, is that and I think it's you know it's partially because of this show and other things too. People are like I've never tried this program before. I'm going to now. I'm going to start with the free for all. And there were some other people who said, I want to get into it. What do I get into? 
Go to TriviaSD.com and just type in, in the search bar, just type in matches. And there's Bibiani and, and his crew did a uh, did articles, the top 11 matches to watch mm. uh, if you want to get hooked on the Schmodown. So the, that's out there to check out. Nice. That was so fun, dude. It was, it was definitely like easily my favorite live event you guys have done. Yeah, it was really good. I had so much fun. The energy was crazy. Yeah. I've never. 550 people. Yeah, everyone was just having so much fun. Like it was like we you missed out. Yeah, well, thanks. It was so yeah. fun. Christian yeah. schedules them when I go out of town. I know. So yeah. you'll be, but you will be there for Chicago. I will be there for Chicago. And that'll be even crazier. I think we're yeah. going to hit 900 people. Yeah. Which is nuts. Yeah. That's it's awesome. Nuts. Oh, and the the FOMO is kicking in. I know. The <laughs> SchmodownLive.com. The SchmodownLive.com. Also, shout out to every Collider Live fan that came up to talk to Brett Both and I. Both of you guys, and, right? Yeah. Did you get a lot so, of them? Uh, yeah, yeah, everyone was so nice. Yeah, and, it was fun. And and we we got uh, Riley and I. Uh, one of the, uh, our fans got uh, g- gave us records, like vinyl records awesome. of the thing. Oh, cool! Oh. Oh. How was that movie? Is that any good? Pretty good. Good. Yeah, you the, should maybe the, the, watch the, it one day. I don't, yeah, we'll yeah. see. I, I, Do you know I, who composed it? <laughs> um, the, the John it. Carpenter composed <laughs> it. No. Also? Anitia, uh, what's Anitia. It? Anitia. Anitia. Yeah. A- Enio. That's it. Enio Morricone. Yes. Yeah. But I was right. Yeah. But I said Anitio. My listen, everything between Mount Ever Mount Everlast and all this other stuff, my head's been just jumbled. <laughs> and the, you think you think my you think the daughter helped that out? Mm-mm. No. She no. wakes up today at like three thirty, mm-hmm. then four, she, she just and she was a little a little monster this morning. Mm-hmm. I gotta tell you. Monster was the word you really <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say asshole, but I decided not to call it. Not call to call it assholes. Yeah, I mean, she, again, my one and a half year old this morning, just everything. Wake up, this is what I had to do. Wake up in the morning with her. She's normally what I'll do is I'll put on Spotify and I'll play what whether it's the Elmo thing or the Winnie Pooh playlist. That's why she's pissed off. Play yeah. better music. Yeah, thank one you, Dorina. That's what she wants. Journey live you, in Houston. No, if I don't, and there is a movie mix that she likes too. Those are the three that she likes. Okay. So one of those will hit. Okay. So I said, which one do you want? She said, Poo. All right, fine, Poo. Put on Poo. And then Maybe she meant the who and you must have. Yeah. She, meant, yeah. she meant she wanted to watch Poo. Because what she does now is like she she takes she has this little red chair and she walks over and she has two stuffed animals where she's got the, the Winnie the Pooh stuffed animal mm-hmm. and the Elmo. And she picks the one up by the arm and slings it. And then takes <laughs> the other one and throws it. And then she sits down like a queen. And she puts her arms down and she's just like. Yeah, give me, give Play. me, give, give me, me what I want, yeah. and then I'm See, like, okay, here's, like, here's the music, and then she's like, ah! and I'm like, I'm like, all right, then let's try, let's try the Elmo, ah! like, okay, then how about the movie music? Because the movie music yesterday, this is what happened. Then she gets up and she starts dancing. Mm-hmm. I was like, good, then I can make breakfast, I can do everything I need to do. I might as well have made her smell her own diaper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was throwing her body around, just screaming. I was like, I'm not going to put on a TV right now. Yeah. So then so what I did, I go to YouTube. She loves birds, as I've said on this show. I found what they do for cats. And they, they had like this three-hour video where it's just birds <laughs> flying Chirping. back and forth and eating shit. Yeah. And I just put it on. for, And she just sat there for a second. I calmed her down. Yeah. But after a while, if I could translate, I think what she would have said is, all right, enough with the fucking birds. Yeah. yeah. Play. And, and let's, see let's see some, some uh, let's lions see eating yeah. zebras. It yes. was, it, dude, everything. My wife, normally my wife can sleep a little bit. She's just like, what is with all the racket? I go, there is nothing I am doing right now that this kid So it sounds is like you're with. dealing with yourself. Uh, not not this one. This my my, my older my old, it was a, it was a valid attempt to get a burn, but it's but it's inaccurate because the the I don't know. I mean, you'd still disagreed when I called you a baby. So what? from when last time I I, yeah. I I literally said on the show the next day yeah that Dorina was right. So I like, of course, so, you so, said Dorina was right. Can I get that? Uh, As a, on a shirt, yeah, yeah. going to be the last appearance they ever have on this show, yeah. for sure, too. Um, Yay, finally. Yeah, it's so funny. Hey, what's the line on Jarena getting a shirt before me, by the way? <laughs> Everybody wants shirts. And here's what I'll tell you about with Listen, shirts. Listen, I just want my face on a shirt! I can't tell you how many Schmodown competitors are like, I think it's time I have a shirt. Yeah. Guess what? The shirts need to sell. Okay. The shirts need to sell. And, like, if, if, if there was, I've given people shirts before, and, and they sell two shirts. Yeah. Right. Like, how come I don't have more shirts? Because they're not selling. It's right. the whole point. It's like you got to sell the fucking shirts. I My mom them. would probably buy a hundred, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the Collider Live shirts, though, by the way, that's a different. That's a different animal altogether because that's not my business. Collider is Mark Fernandez's yeah. business. I know they're working on a shirt, so actually that leads into this. Go to the Facebook group right now. I'm glad you brought this up. What shirt would you want to see if it was a Collider Live shirt first? There is a Collider Live design, like it's that that design, but it's a little yeah. more. Dorina's is just a black shirt with a black D on it, so it's just a black shirt. Yeah, yeah and it says I won't be here for much longer. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and so because Christian's a baby. Yes, uh, <laughs> and it's just me with like like the Roger Rabbit baby just screaming out in the back with the Yankees hat on. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> but what shirt would you want to see? I mean, I'm sure like a Roxy Can I Come shirt would, mm-hmm. would be something. Um, Sleep in the hallway. Be better would be, be a better. good yeah. shirt yeah. for sure. Good Sleep one. in the suck hallway. My pussy. Suck my yeah, pussy. That, that, hey. that one will be hard to. to you could just but, do suck yeah. my and a picture of a cow. You could just do that, SMP. Yeah. But I, I think that SMP. was like a skater brand back in the day. Oh. I just want to see. I'm no. going to. No, bread. no, no. That's a good one too. No yeah. bread. Uh, you better listen, Jack. Is a good one. <laughs> garbage, garbage, garbage. You garbage. One. You want to call garbage boy? Yeah. So there's there's a lot of them out there. So go to the Facebook group. If there was one shirt, if there was one shirt that we would launch with, which was the shirt that you would want and and you you would get because that's the one that I'm going to tell because Jack's going to. Uh, Jack's gonna make those live, I guess, in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and so. and and also my rent just went up a hundred bucks a month. So I, if yeah. I handmade shirts, yeah. how much would you pay for each shirt? <laughs> is the question. Yeah, uh, well, the margin the is not be? great. Uh, it would just be just random. I just draw on them, or you know, like, yeah, yeah, with some like doodle, 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 doodle on it. Yeah. Just, I mean, I'm a horrible artist, so they yeah. would be. Right. Well, you so, are by the selling way, you these both, shirts. Speaking of free for all, really quick, you guys both did an excellent job at your jobs at oh, the free for all. That's nice of yes. you. Yes, oh, thank, thank you, you thank so you. much. Just, I have to. What's the twist? What do you mean? No twist. Right? I'm just complimenting oh, you. Wow. Well, this yeah. doesn't. You can, un- yeah, you can understand why I'm. I'm <laughs> You're a little skeptical. scared about yeah. what's about to come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, um, I'm just uh, well, honestly, you. you guys did a great job. That Everyone was, nice. was uh, the produ- production team. You guys as hosts, everything was great. Production was amazing. I mean, they really, yeah, they really. Not you. You don't count. You were, no, no. You were there. I, I gave him props the other day. I I, those guys. I mean, to walk into that space and and and, and like a skeleton crew, like go yeah. like, okay, what are we gonna do here? Uh, it's amazing what they pull like, off. That is like Dumbledore yeah. Yeah. when it comes to production. He just totally. he's got he's got everybody with him, and they just they just make it work. It was awesome. That's why I never I never get in their way when like if they say like like at one point like Thad came up to me because of the live stream. The, right. the TriCaster kind of crapped out and he came up to me and he goes we only have one angle that's mm-hmm. all we have and, I, and at no point in my head did I ever go well, well can we fix it can we do anything else I went all right, right. whatever you want to do right. you've 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 made the magic you and you know people people were pissed off about it at first but they understood what what happened and now they, they see the full edited version tomorrow yeah. so but it was great that and, and crew are, are awesome and I can't wait to see what happens in Chicago because that's the only scary part with Chicago is we've never seen we can't do like a walkthrough right. of the theater so yeah. we got to get there we got to do it and plus coming off of that it's going to be an exhausting week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When do you get there? You, Wednesday. You get it on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! Okay, I get it on Thursday. Um, I'm the red eye Thursday night. Thursday night. So you mean like Friday Early morning? Friday morning. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that that's going to be because Friday is really it kicks off. Even though Thursday is like the preview night for. Well, I'm only there Wednesday because I have a podcast Thursday. You do oh, yeah. I, on the floor? Uh, I don't know where it is. Oh, okay. Who's the podcast? It's, with, uh, it's Four Center Pod with Ken and, oh. and Joseph. Oh, 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 Thursday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're doing their show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Because Thursday night, you can go see that if you're there. You can go see um, the Top Ten show, which is Thursday night. Friday is Mark Ellis's two comedy shows. And Saturday night, of course, is the um, Schmodown. But we also are going to be doing a, it's called the, the Trivia for Masters, because we can call it the Schmodown right away. How um, come? Lucasfilm had, had something that they didn't want to call it. Schmodown at first we can release it as the Schmodown mm-hmm. we can and but as far as the marketing goes they want to they want to call it the Trivia Masters or something so on on Friday the I think it's at like two o'clock it's like two forty five or two fifty something like that you okay. can find it just called Trivia Masters five competitors whoever wins that will play Alex Damon the on next Saturday. night and that will if you can't see if you can't be there for Star Wars Celebration that particular match will air actually on Collider the following have week. you announced the undercard for that on Saturday. Yeah, 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 it's Alex Damon versus the winner of that of that match. The, no, main, no. the main event is the Odd Couple versus uh, who's the boss? Oh, gotcha, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So I mean, well, it's kind of a double main event, right, right, right. But we're gonna do, but those guys. I mean, th- th- that whole show. Can you imagine? Just Snyder's gonna eat it up because you Snyder Snyder the free for all ate it up. His entrance was yeah. incredible, and you you see those guys coming out. That Roxy's gonna have a blast. Yeah. Oh yeah. In front of, I mean, dude, that that this is. Almost doubling what the free for all did. Mm-hmm. A thousand people. That's going to be nuts. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, July, July 20th, we Ra- Rachel Cushing at Comic Con. So. How is Comic Con already here, man? It's crazy. It's nuts. It's and not it's right around the corner. It's smart We're still. Just, <laughs> but it still is. Time needs to be not not exist. We have three it's, more months it's, until it's, July. It's mm-hmm. it's really like four months, but you think yeah. about it, though, that's when you got to start prepping for this But we shit. were just mm. partying in San Diego. I know. It's crazy. It goes, it, yeah. I'm so tired. I know. And well, you guys are way older than me. I think. I don't actually know how old you yeah, guys are. I don't think too much older. I don't yeah. want I mean, to call you out, but yeah. you're full yeah, of shit. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. I am full of shit. Yeah, 
See, look at that. Now that's a shirt I wish we had. <laughs> that shirt I would buy you immediately. I'm full of shit. Only if I can have the Christian is a baby shirt. Fine. But it's actually, uh, this is, these are my notes. Animals <laughs> smell bad, hashtag body odor, and then Zack Snyder. Uh, great That's notes. Oh, you've got I mean, it. It's really, it's brilliant. Today's opening day of baseball. Just so it is opening day of baseball. No, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah you got your Yankees. Yeah, on. I do. And I got to try to. What I'm, I'm sorry, I was asleep. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, a big. You didn't write that not one down. Fan? I did, I, did, I grew up with soccer. Yeah. And uh, basketball, and right. then football, but and but baseball's and huge in Mexico. It is. Yeah, I just don't like it. Just wasn't your. Thing. I mean, it's fine. I appreciate as as every sport, I appreciate the athleticism. But it's not your bag. But I just don't get it as excited. Like I can appreciate the skill, but when I'm sitting there and watching a game, I get more excited when I'm watching a hockey or a soccer oh, game. Oh, believe you me, I haven't sat through a regular season baseball game on television in maybe ever. Right. But I mean, there's nothing quite like going to a baseball. Yeah, game. it's right. all about the stadium. Yeah, it, I love Anaheim, man. I love the Angel Stadium. I me really too. do. I mean, Yankees. You can't. Yankees to me are, are ride or die. But the, but out here, if I've got a catch one it's either if it's dodgers or, or angels i'm going to angels game i totally. love the stadium there. getting I, in and out of <clears throat> dodger stadium is an tough. absolute disaster they've gotten better but it's still it's still, it's still pretty awful yeah. my grandma yeah. used to take me to wrigley i've been there like three or four times in the awesome. Cubs when i was a kid oh, yeah wow. yeah yeah I, I, I went to uh um chicago every year to visit my uh, grandparents and um you know it's interesting that i didn't get to go to the chicago thing but, um <laughs> I mean, kind of want to win kind of kind of know the city but <laughs> you i know. knew you wanted to work <laughs> yeah, 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 I didn't know. I didn't know you wanted to go. Nah, it's all right. I mentioned that my sister lived in Brooklyn. Didn't go to that one. <laughs> um, but we are back. <laughs> Speaking of weird, Riley, a salty dog today. Yeah, yeah Riley. Because what's the news, man? You, you sitting out in the in the booth there? What are you doing? Yeah, just doing right. some producer work there, Christian. Oh, oh, wow. uh, yeah. We got some news no. going on. Yeah, we have news. What do you got? Yeah, well, uh, guess who is joining the MCU? Ralph oh. Biscuits. Ralph Biscuits has yes. been cast Donnie as Kyle's the Eternals. <laughs> the lead of the Eternals, Ralph Biscuits. Yeah. We're very excited. We've been talking about him a long time. Oh, wait, Angelina Jolie. Angelina uh, Jolie. That's right. She's in talks to join Eternals, making her first MCU debut. Man, okay. and, you know... I think for the Angelina Jolie story, if we <laughs> are able is. to start from the beginning... <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Angelina Jolie. Yep, that's, that's the one. That's my mm -hmm. thoughts. Um, I I don't know. I I, I just really I don't get. get you, last night, Riley does anybody like her? I I, 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 I do like. I thought I thought she's, she's really cool like as you. Maleficent. She was it's awesome. As Even if you don't like the movie, she was she's a fine. badass. I'm just yeah. kidding. She's Angelina Jolie. Yeah, she's. <laughs> I yeah. mean, whatever you think of her, she was really cool yeah. as Maleficent, and yeah. she used to be a really cool action star. Yes, yeah. wanted. So, yeah, which is a, the other comic movie. Comic book movie she's been Salt on. Salt yeah. also, right? Is Salt well, no, a graphic Wanted novel? is comic book by, Salt, by Mark it? Miller. I thought Salt was a graphic novel, I actually too. don't know. I just know Mark Miller because okay. I love him. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, she's... She's fine. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't get necessarily get excited when the big movie stars get cast and stuff too. And she. I don't know how invested but she's going to be. But also at this point, like after this, after Endgame, now you're getting into properties that I have absolutely no clue about. Right. But you, you didn't know about Guardians. But did you, you know, about, know Guardians about Guardians? Of course, I knew about Guardians. No, really? Of the Galaxy. No. Yes. My dad read Guardians of the Galaxy. No. Is that true? Yes. I want to go was back. Your, was your dad a big comic book? Uh, yes, yeah, he was. I'm, yeah. I'm saying I knew who the Guardians of the Galaxy okay. at least were. Okay. Do you know okay. what I'm saying? A lot like, of people didn't. You knew know. who Rocket was. I, I I knew that character. Okay. Because the Guardians of the Galaxy have been around for a while. Right. Now you could tell me the Eternals have been around for a while. Great. But I still have absolutely like they could be like she's playing uh, Curtain Lady in in no Eternals. Yeah, and I'm like I mean, who they, the f is? I don't been know around who the Eternals. Been, they were created by Jack Kirby. But that's so what I, I like no about idea. it because that's why I love Gardens because I knew nothing about it. Right. And it was a new story. Yeah. And it was it, yeah. I, it was me discovering right. a different I'm, world. I'm kind of there. Yeah. For me, I don't. I don't mind that they're doing properties I'm not familiar with. That's fine with me because I, I didn't know about Guardians. I knew nothing about them, and I thought they delivered on it pretty well. I didn't really even know that much about Ant Man. I was aware of them, but yeah. I didn't I didn't know enough about it. If they, as long as they have the right team in place, yeah. that I get excited about it. I'm always interested. Exactly. I just I'm just not gonna go. Oh my God! I have to see this now because Angelina Jolie's in it. She, right. I, I just don't think right. there's yeah, a lot of movie stars I that don't do really, that. Yeah, I don't really care if the, if the actor's good, great. Yeah. I just uh, it's I don't go see movies because of the actor usually. It's that that's changed. That, that, yeah, you bet, I, like we're not in the like the mid '90s anymore. Like yeah. that that just doesn't happen anymore. Right. I'll see TV shows because of Gillian Anderson because he, she makes good choices mm -hmm. and she picks really good TV shows. You're, but usually, you're not wrong though. With TV, TV is yeah. more of the movie star platform now because, right. because you can't. For example, again, we talked about Julia Roberts the other day, right? That that Homecoming show. Like yeah. I don't know if any people 
watch that show as much if it wasn't Julia Roberts. I agree. Inside, I mean, you'd probably still get people to watch it with enough promotion, yeah. and maybe you can get another star. But more people tuned in for that mm -hmm. because of Julia Roberts. And the flip side of that kind of is goes not... back to what we were talking about with The Rock yesterday and that Titan Games right. and Kevin Hart with exactly. TKO. Yeah. But the flip side of that too is not a lot of people went out to see Ben is back because Julia Roberts was in it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's it's. You, it, Yes, Perfect. the 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 <laughs> television the television benefits more from movie stars than movies yeah. benefit from movie or stars. The, although, or do you think it's because we are actual film fans that will go see a movie based on the director or the writer, uh, whereas maybe mass audiences do go see still they do still go see movies because of actors. The numbers the numbers have shown that that's not the okay. case. Like Will Smith used to be that guy. The Rock isn't even necessarily that guy anymore. He's probably the closest one to it. And but but skyscraper didn't. Nothing. And I like skyscraper, and that didn't benefit just because. The Rock was in it. It's it's but it premise. All, but the trailer also looked crappy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so. but but it's but it's premise. It's, think, that's, uh, that's right. It's the premise, and it's whether or not people want. How is Mark being yeah, marketed? Exactly. Do right. you think yeah. Danny Trejo was Boots is going to sell tickets? <laughs> what, what is that? What's Boots? What? Boots and the door. <laughs> what? Wait, what? The oh, 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 oh. Danny Trejo is it. playing Boots. Am oh, I wrong? No, Am no I, you might be right. I didn't. The monkey it. Boots. And I didn't know that. <laughs> What? Indoor the Explorer. Indoor the Explorer. Oh. Which, hey, I want to bring something up. Yes, I watched the I, I Dora trailer. Started, I watched so. the Deadwood trailer. I prepared for one show, <laughs> and we didn't talk about any of them. So I've given up on preparing for anything. Well, I was, I've been waiting for that boot. Was, okay, Fred, what are your thoughts on the new Dora the Explorer? I think it looks Thank fun. And, and can I we think have, Michael we, Pena is, looks hilarious. Can we have can, a boot standalone, you think? I think we can do a boot standalone. <laughs> Danny Trejo. Boots. Boots some boots. Some boots. There okay. you go. Yeah, all right, nice. Where's yeah. my Danny Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> it's gone. He's, it's gone. He's, he's shuffling he's through it, sweating at this point. I'm sorry. I already know Spanish, so I never cared about Dora the Explorer. Oh, there Dora. You no, I, I, you know, the, everybody's up it? in Your arms. Uh, my daughter watched yeah. it, and uh, um, I think my son did Diego. Not like, not because yeah, yeah. I was like gender Do they pushing speak them anyway. Do they speak a little Spanish? Uh, my son does now because of school, where he's, okay. he's learning. Is he still it, doing but, the German? But, but, yeah, he's doing. He, he does a German, and, and then he also does uh, Spanish. Your, right. We should have your son come in here and do the interview. Uh, oh, the lead uh, is the girl from Instant Family. Yeah, yeah. The, people good. are kind of up in arms because she's a teenager, but I mean, I don't think he How would want a, an, an eight-year-old oh. out in the jungle. She's I mean, it's, it would, the, the real Dora is kind of a fright. Right. Thing if you would actually put that in a trailer. Cool. Though? Yeah, I, I thought it looked fun. I thought I thought it looked fun. And what was the other one I mean, it, I, it's not. I mean, oh, come on, Deadwood. it's it's you know. Oh, and the Deadwood one. Well, I mean, I'm, I love Deadwood. Deadwood so so I, I never got into that oh, show. Either. You know, cool. you know why? Because it's, for the silliest reason uh, to to admit it. Um, because you watch stupid shit instead of the thing. <laughs> yes, um, but That's no. The reason correct. the reason why was I couldn't get I couldn't buy the cursing in the Wild Wild West. Yeah, I couldn't buy it. Well, the it, it did you like, watch Battlestar Galactica? Yeah, but that's then what different. about frack and all that that's, weird stuff? Because that stuff fit into the language of the time. But that's to me, where that comes from? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Because that, that to me, I, I didn't buy like people cursing like the Sopranos. Okay. But they also they also spoke more eloquently in in like lower class, but it was an elegant speak with you know the cursing and stuff. I thought I, I loved the dialogue in, in Deadwood. Yeah. I thought that would that made it for me. It was, a lot of people. Did. A lot of times it was kind of hard to yeah. understand what they were talking about, but uh, you know. I I tried to binge like I, this was probably like three or four months yeah. ago. I really tried to binge. Deadwood, and I got through like four episodes, and just couldn't care less about the show, right. and I just turned it off. Like, and I get it; people love Deadwood. I just for a western, like I watched that Jeff Daniels western, Godless, and that was great. But I knew it was eight episodes. I guess like the daunting task of having to sit through. You're not a big westerns guy. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. Me I mean, either. I hate Westworld uh, mostly for the robots, but I also hate westerns uh, in general. Like, I like Tombstone. That's probably the only western I really, yeah. really right. like. And that's, yeah, I, lo well, I, I like Tombstone, and then uh, Young the, Guns. the Clint Young Guns, Guns obviously. <laughs> Yes. And, the, that, and the Clint Eastwood um, trilogy, the I don't know, Fist, I Fistful of Dollars trilogy. Right. It was and, like uh, nothing I've ever seen. So that's, I yeah. mean, it was just something. Yeah, yeah well, I was hooked you're immediately. Not, yeah, you're, and, you know. yeah, a lot of people love that. So obviously, that's why they're making a movie. Right. And it's a prequel. Because no. no, it's not. Timothy Oliphant's in the show. He is in the show. Oh yeah, yeah. but I, thought yeah. He, I, actually, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen it. I thought he died in the show. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, don't don't. It's been a long time since I've seen it. I never finished. Yeah, I I don't. I think I've watched. 45 minutes of an episode mm. so I, I don't know 
You know what's a good Western, though? What's that? Back to the Future 3. Yes. Yeah. It's probably the best Western 100%. ever. 100%. Ever. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, moving on. I mean, right. We're talking about Westerns, though. What's that one what? that came out with Chris Pine recently? It was like sort of a modern-day Western. That I love. Uh, Hell or High Water. I love that, that movie. Oh, that it is a modern-day yeah. Western, yeah. for sure. And yeah. I love that movie. That movie, I went to. I saw that movie in the theater twice and then watched it twice when it came out on Blu-ray. I yeah. love that movie. It's yeah. such a good movie. Um, Too many horses in Westerns. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> well, right? you, I, I guess a modern <laughs> Western also would be the rider. Yeah, right? because it's a modern type of Western. Sure, it's di- different. Totally. But um, I that movie, and and I and I'm bummed by the fact that uh, a lot of people called me out on it, and rightfully so. I didn't put it in my top ten. I should have. Should have. Yeah, should have yeah. been my top ten for sure. It just when I was making that list at the end of the year, I was going through and forgot about it. That's that's a movie a lot of people should see. Totally for sure. That's a very well done movie. Yeah. Uh, Riley, what else we got? Anything good? Yeah, so the uh, the Oscars, right? I've heard of them. Yeah, they are probably going to next year go without a host again. They, Smart. They thought it uh, worked very well, so they're considering keeping that format. Uh, why, I mean, why wouldn't you? For, <laughs> for two reasons. One, the ratings have been up. Two, why deal with the headache yep. sure. of everybody telling you that A, uh, what, I don't know about that. what are you doing yeah. with this person? B, it's, it's like, cheaper to produce. Uh, uh, you don't have to pay oh, you're going to do another white guy? Oh, you're going to do another girl? Like, it's, yeah. Nobody's ever freaking and happy. And as much as we were all talking crap before the show and we we're like, oh, it's going to be sh- such a shit show, it actually was fine. It was fine. Yeah. It, mo- it they moved didn't need a lot. House. My yeah. favorite yeah. part faster. of the show was at the end when Julia Roberts goes, oh, I guess that's it. That's Thanks it. for watching. Yeah. You're like, great. Mm-hmm. It, it was amazing. All the show should be correct. You, it's not. It's not what it used to be back in the day. And you just move people. And and I actually thought it was very interesting to bring all walks of life in there, as opposed to just movie stars. You mm-hmm. have like you know you got athletes and, and totally. whoever you know. What, what's his face from uh, Rage Against the Machine? Tom Morello was uh, You're, awesome. Yeah, he was up there. And also, he's the best. You love Tom Morello. You I interviewed him, right? I did interview him. He was one. He's the best interview ever. He's so cool. He's my he's favorite. The nicest he's guy. The, he's probably the second. I mean, if you look at originality in yeah. guitar, right? As far as bands go, you can look at like Stevie Ray Vaughan. But Tom Morello and Eddie Van Halen changed how guitars mm-hmm. sound. Yep. My, my favorite he's performance a revolutionary by him. Guitar player. Yes. yes. And you want to hear something great from him that I don't know if a lot of people. I don't know because I know you're like a hardcore fan. Of his you might know about this. You might not. I actually went to see. I went to see Bruce Springsteen in uh, in Anaheim. I think it was like 2009. Oh, did you see him with Tom? And, and oh, Tom came out and played man. the ghost of Tom Joe. Oh, that's amazing. It is awesome. Yeah. That's so Li- crazy. Have you ever heard that the, yeah. his rendition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ghost of Tom Joad with uh, with Morello and Springsteen. It's 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 a better version than, than yeah. Springsteen's version of it. It's great. One of, one of uh, the questions that a Google employee wanted to ask, wanted me to ask him was, uh, what was better for you, uh, either playing with Bruce Springsteen or when the Cubs won? <laughs> <laughs> and that was actually difficult for him to answer. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, because he came in when he came out, and it was. I, just, I've listened, I can't tell you how many times. It's just duct tape under there. Yeah. Do yeah. not. Yeah, it's gonna go sooner or later. Um, so what the did, hell? Did you ever see though? So did you ever see Rage Against the Machine when? No, never? I never saw them. No. So I was like. 16 yeah. and went up to Penn State to visit my brother and they played with Wu-Tang Clan Oof. Rage Against the Machine put on the craziest show ever and Wu-Tang Clan was four hours late wow, wow. played one song and left are you serious yep that's good. Yeah. Yes, this, this is one of the greatest no, I, songs ever. Oh, so good. I just I, didn't get to see many concerts because remember I didn't live that here. That's true. I, I didn't yeah. move to the states till 2000. Wow. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Interesting. You should have moved here earlier. And by then, Rage Against the Machine I broke know. up. What? No three? I like, know. They were yeah. they were yeah. pretty much done by then. Yeah. But so anyway, it goes back to the the point that Oscars should absolutely bring in more personalities Agreed. like this to some degree because you don't you don't need the headache. You don't need the headache. Why are you going back to the point? And Kevin also, no. Kevin plus, Hunter. they also still suck because they give awards to bad editing. Yeah. Right. Uh, which, what do they give it to? Bohemian Rhapsody? Yeah. 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 Just no, take you, all those awards out. If shorten the show. Just well, put, put we, them they, on. They, they try to do that, and then uh, people yeah. went nuts. Uh, what else, Riley? Is that it? Uh, for oh, all the alien fans out there, Ooh. celebrating the 40th anniversary and 20th Century Fox is releasing six shorts made by up-and-coming filmmakers all set in the universe. Does it, is it canon? It's I don't know. That's yeah. a good question. They're not saying, but you know what? 20th Century Fox is all hosted on IGN. I believe it. you could say it's going to be canon because it's, you know, 20th Century Fox is backing this. Yeah, I guess the bigger question is yeah, will, Disney continue the, will Disney continue the Alien franchise is the, is well, the better question here. They let me ask better, you I would imagine. Uh, let yeah. me ask you this. I mean uh, Prometheus and Covenant are canon. Yeah, they're all right. Yeah. So and they're not But they're but but the question is but they didn't really make that much money the last one anyway. So are there is Disney gonna continue with it? They have the properties. Riley, what do you want to ask? Uh, what if these things really take off? Are they monitoring this and going, hmm, there is an audience? I mean shorts 
you know, it's a little hard to, to monitor that. But yeah. if it really blows up, could Disney kind of look at that and go, you know, we'll see. Maybe we can make more aliens because, sure, you know, we're, we're going to get Deadpool as is over on Disney. They're going to well, figure because, something out. Because of what you just said, though, Deadpool right now, it, it ain't broke. Right. So keep but alien is. But right alien's now. broke. Yeah. And, and, and it's funny because the guy who really brought it to life the first time in Ridley Scott is ultimately the reason that it's starting to stink up again. Because, look, the thing I, with Ridley Scott. I don't know about that. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I, I, th I think that. Because Ridley Scott was having, I don't think anybody can argue that he was having a string of bad movies for, right. for a bit before we hit with The Martian. Then everyone, because everybody was talking how bad Ridley Scott was again. He's lost the magic. He's not there. Then what's the one? The counselor was right. atrocious. Did you guys he, like Prometheus? Um, uh, Prometheus was a well-made movie, mm -hmm. but I did not like the film. Okay, um, fair enough. But there's a lot of people who are on the opposite mm -hmm. side. Of the, uh, it, 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 it was it was good to set up the mythology. I thought. I thought it was a cool sci-fi movie that ended kind of crappy. Yes, yeah, so I think it's set up. I think it was a good prequel, and yeah. people argue that it wasn't a prequel, and it's clearly a prequel. It is, I mean, yeah. it, it clearly it was fun. Is. Like yeah, but it set it up fine. But then the reason I say that that he's more responsible because they were going to have Neil Bloomkamp do the direct sequel mm -hmm. to Aliens, and which is cool. Which is cool. Which is essentially what they did with Halloween and what's going on. Because I'm looking. So Body of Lies, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Robin Hood, yeah. eh. The Counselor, yeah. man. Exodus, Gods and Kings, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. Then he had Martian, and then you know That's Alien right. Covenant. Well, you so. said Martian, right? Damn, Martian. he's like a Tim Burton. He was doing a lot of stink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, the, he and but he hit with the Martian. I was like, oh, Ridley Scott's back, yay! Mm -hmm. right. right, and that was it. Right. But then before, then be, even before, so American Gangster, which I really liked. Yes. It was so, fine. so he's got like that one every four because before that, a good year. Right. right. All the Invisible Children. See, he had he's Kingdom had more, of Heaven. He's had more stinker. Though Kingdom of Heaven, the the director's cut is pretty good. Is it? Yeah. I mean, but I like but anyway, the the point is. Then he got, and it was, it was Ridley Scott is back, and they give Ridley Scott the alien. He's doing, he's doing alien again, and he pretty much just tells Bloomkamp, "You're not doing your thing. Get, bye bye. That's that's over now. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue Prometheus, right, which is kind of. I happen to like Covenant. I think I'm like the only. person. I love half of it. Yeah, and the, I hate half half of it as well. Uh, the the thing with Covenant to me, it felt more like an alien movie mm -hmm. than the previous. But I mean, hardcore alien fans hated it. Yeah, a well, lot of I'm a lot a, of people did. I'm a hardcore alien and fan. You and you didn't and hate it. I, well, because so, I like the sci-fi aspect of it. Yes. I thought the horror aspect, which is like these cheesy like CG alien like xenomorphs that yeah. were not scary, and everybody in in the movie like all the characters were idiots. You know, so right. it was like kind of like a like half of it was like a bad horror movie. It, it, it was. Uh, whereas definitely. like the stuff with Michael Fassbender's character, that was some cool like who created us, right. like you know, like uh, human condition type stuff. Like that was really cool. I agree. I gotta tell you, I was very bored You're by bored, both huh? movies. That does not surprise me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but a lot of people were bored. There was a movies. dog sure. barking well, the whole time. <laughs> Cody, oh, yeah. are you, are Cody are you that's an a alien different fan? level of boring. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not like a hardcore, but I enjoy both Prometheus and Covenant. You did, and Riley, yeah. what do you think about Covenant? Yeah, it was yeah. all right. Yeah. I, I like. I love Prometheus. I, I really loved what he was going for, and I wanted more of that in the right. second one. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you, Darina. I thought it there was really good stuff happening, and then it kind of fell apart at the end. Right. right. Cody, did you happen to pull that uh, Denzel Washington clip yet? Uh, Denzel Washington. Yeah. <laughs> Denzel Washington. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love that clip that's, so that's much. That's a billion times better than Winnie Goldberg. <laughs> I love that. The Denzel Washington. Yes, yeah. it's incredible. Any single time we talk about him or anybody, oh, it has to be played. Denzel yeah. Washington. Yeah. <laughs> Denzel Washington. It's, yeah. it's really good. That makes the me happy. The second I heard, yeah. the first time it's I heard good. it, yeah. all in my head, I was going, sound clip. Yeah. Yeah, it's such now a that's nice. all I'm going to think when I Denzel see Denzel Washington, Washington yeah. in a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. Yeah. That. That to me, I can see it at a live event. People <laughs> saying Denzel Washington, yeah. yes. Uh, yes. Riley, that's everything with the news. Yeah, that's pretty much pretty it. Much unless, it. You, know, you know, End Game. You know, we, we're going to oh, talk right. about that yeah. in a little bit. And oh, they're still talk making. Now. No, <laughs> let's see. What time is it? It's 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 ten forty. No, we we can we can BS a little bit. Um, Anything else? Like, what's the big the big movies coming out this week? Or Dumbo? Did you, did you wind up seeing it? I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to see it hopefully soon. Yeah, Maybe this next I'm week. I'm curious what you I'm think gonna about it. I'm going to see every Michael Keaton movie. Yeah, no, and which which you should. And I, I favorite Michael Keaton movie. I want to see every Michael. Keaton I know. Movie. Oh, you're what's asking your favorite? me. Yeah. <gasps> oh my god, Mr. Mom. Hard. I mean, Mr. Mom well, great. there's a difference yeah. between favorite movie and favorite performance, Gun right? Because okay. favorite performance, Beetlejuice. Okay. Beetle, he's amazing in Beetlejuice. Totally. Uh, favorite movie. God, that's so hard. Have you seen Gung Ho? 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you seen Mr. Mom? Yes. Have you seen the 1989 Batman? Of yeah. course. <laughs> well, see, I love, but you guys. He was good in Spotlight, I lo- too. I love Spotlight, great. Half of, I, I love Spotlight. Great Spotlight. I love half of Batman Returns, you know that. Like, I love most of Batman Returns. See, so. I, that, to me, that surprises As, me. I'll tell you what, that you, that, that you don't love it. Because people. No, I love that movie. Oh, I just, there's stuff that I have. Like, the Penguin I don't stuff. Love that movie. I know. Yeah. But any, anything with Michael Keaton and Michelle Pfeiffer is yes. amazing. It is the best Batman stuff. What? My life. In my life. Yes. Yeah. It's That's good. a great he's, I just, it's, he's, it's like picking children. Like, he's Jack done Frost. everything. Have you seen Jack Frost? <laughs> I, I've seen it. Yeah. I mean, Herbie yeah. fully loaded. Yeah. Multiplicity. Multiplicity. He's awesome yeah. in that movie. So you really have never missed one of his movies? No. So you're going to see I this one. I love him. Yeah. Do you know where he's from? It, no. That's good. I, is he? It's anytime Makuga asks you, do you know where he's from? <laughs> yeah. Just answer Pittsburgh. Come on. <laughs> That's it. He never, he never yeah. asks. He never, have you guys never, ever yeah. interviewed Here's something you'll never hear. You know where he's from? Pittsburgh? No, Canada. Yeah. You're never going to hear that. Nope. Yeah. It's always Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Always Have you guys Pittsburgh. interviewed him? Uh, no. I'm not he is. Uh, he is a. a he's elusive. A, a, he's I'm very scared. elusive. He does not like the press. He does not like being interviewed. Yeah, which is why he Mark, Mark Maron had him on his podcast once. Yeah. It was like oh, an right. hour and fifteen minutes. It was a great interview. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Really, he was coming back into. Oh, what a Birdman! Obviously, right. I oh yeah, yeah. That, that's actually that's one of my favorite stories. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I carded yeah. his girlfriend uh, when I was working oh. the door of a bar, which was very awkward. How would you know his girlfriend? He was with her. Oh, and, yeah. oh. <laughs> I noticed him, yeah. and she looked rather young, so yes. I, yeah. I had to card her. Okay. And and it was. Did and he I, get mad at you? But it was like I saw her first, and I and then I looked at him, and I was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, bro." Oh. You know, he's a, you know he started at the comedy store. Yeah, that's where he began his his career. He was a stand up comedian. Yeah. yeah, he's probably the only person that I would be like freaking out about if I met him. We got to get him in. He's here. the cool. I want to see you freak out. No. Yeah. I'll just hide under the table and no, break it. I'll hold the table. And... <laughs> You'll hold be holding yeah. it up like uh, <laughs> Legend. Mount Olympus. Yeah. The um, best. Well, but um, but yeah, so Dumbo's coming out. I'm gonna see it. What else is coming out? I um, loved us. You guys didn't love us. Huh? No, I yeah. loved it, man. It's so I just good. Think it was clever. I think Kuga liked it. <laughs> I'm I'm the wrong audience, but I also did not like it. Yeah, it's yeah. so good. My, yeah, I, my I, liked it. I, I saw it, was, it for a second time, and really? I love See, it direct, even more. Directing and music, yes, story was so predictable. No, but it's, not, but it's not about it's not about the, the story. Whole, no, no, no. Oh. It's it, it's not a, it's it's not about predictability. It's about. It's it goes the deeper than that. The paper boy. No, evening nice. It goes deeper than that. It's about like, are we as humans scared of ourselves the most? Yeah, you know, are we like? There's this whole like deeper psychological sure, thing t- going but, on. Sure, that's but tell, not... but tell me a story that that is not that's not predictable. But also that's, that's all. That's, but also, that's yeah, all yeah, quit trying to jam simile and metaphor down my throat. Like, quit but trying that's to, like, what make... makes a good story. No, it doesn't. Sometimes. Have you ever seen Bad Boys Two? No metaphor. There's nothing. Have you ever seen Gung Ho? There's no metaphor. There's no. That's nothing. why you don't like the movies I like. I love uh, Gung Ho. I just mentioned oh, Michael Keaton. Right, Michael. Right, right. There is a ton of no, movies just, out I... there that don't have metaphor and trying to jam it down my throat. Like the rabbits mean life and life is red shirt and no. they all got scissors. No. Where the fuck did the scissors come from? Where did all the red outfits it's not come about from? That. Yeah, is there that, a seamstress down there? A lot of that point, though, I actually I, I missed I, all of I, what I, that was. I, about. But no, a lot of it I agree with it. But I do. I like symbolism in movies as long as it doesn't take over the movie. And if there's a mixture of both, for example, a lot of symbolism that I think is a brilliant movie is District 9. Mm-hmm. District, oh, 9 District 9 is a great, a great movie. movie. It's done wonderfully. It's a perfect blend of right. both. There's a lot of, there's a lot of message inside of that, but there's also a cool but sci-fi story. doesn't it come there. across with an axe handle and be like, metaphor! <laughs> <laughs> but help, metaphor! But Get Out <laughs> was another example of a movie that that's blends in. So you guys like nice, Get Out better than us. Way better. Well, I, d- I just think they're different. I think oh, yeah, I think one's more different. social commentary and the other one's more of a psychological horror movie. I don't disagree with that at all. I just I but I also think that there's a way when you're I mean because it is it is a throwback to old school horror movies yes. as well. But I do think that Wait, it us is, is the throwback. Yes. Yes. And it is. It's it like is, 70s old school absolutely, horror. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and it sure. is filmed. It is filmed brilliantly. The music is out of control, mm-hmm. good, and the performances are great. It's just there's so much in, and there's just so much inside of that story. I'm like, okay, well that's definitely going to happen, and then right. it does. And then there's so many questions like, well, you figure it out. What really happened? I don't want to figure out. Me neither. Oh, see, those me. are my favorite movies. Sometimes Where did they get done. all of the cages? Uh, Throw the rabbits. Wait, Where wait, did wait, all the cages? Don't spoil. Don't spoil people. Don't spoil. But that's like super. It's in the movies, trailer. Though. But that's I know, like I know. super. I thought you were, so like you were talking about the favorite when you were talking about the rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 you went right, right. on a whole. It's like, a crossover. That's a good movie. It's a crossover. <laughs> it's actually a prequel. But again, see. But but that's the thing. Like horror movies are like sci-fi movies, right? Like those are my favorite movies. When when there are metaphors, when there where you you have to suspend disbelief. Can you give me an example? Of what? Of like one of these movies with all these metaphors and symbols that you live for. Blade Runner. 
Yeah, I mean, I which guess. I know you don't like as much, yeah. but it's my favorite movie of all yeah. time okay. for that reason. Yeah. Like I, anything that is actually making you uncomfortable and think about your life and your existence and figuring out what the hell we're all doing here. Like that's what I'm about. Like yes, I love stupid movies too, but but those are actually my favorite movies. Right. That's what I want to say. I'm see. not trying to take anything away from that. Like what right. you're saying. Right. I'm just saying in this in like a lot of movies sometimes. The symbolism to me just kind of takes over, and I'm like, I don't effing care. You just want an entertaining story. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I, I agree with that too. I don't I don't mind when symbolism is in there if it's. It's just by the time I got to the end of it, I just had too many questions, and not right. questions like again. I bring up the Sopranos to where Sopranos to me tons it ends. Of symbolism. Yeah, there's tons, tons of symbolism, in it, and it leaves you asking the question of, well, wait a minute. Did that, and people hated that too, but did that happen? What could have happened? And then I get that, Inception, right? Same type of thing. But this, I don't think it was necessary. It's like, because they set certain things up, and, and I don't want to spoil it for people, they set certain things up to you're like, well, wait, if that's the case, why didn't that person just do that? And they're like, whoa, well, whoa, well, because trying but to have that's, this conversation. But that's the whole point about suspending disbelief. It's like when no, you're no, no, watching no, no, no. superhero There's, movies. It's like, it's why rules. is that person flying? No, no, no. But no, but there the are rule, no rules, rules. But there are no, no, no rules in horror movies either. It, just no, like no, no. Superhero there are movies. always rules in, in horror movies. In rules for Nightmare on Elm Street, no. there are, yes, there are. There are rules. Well, there's some rules. There's like the main rules of like, okay, don't go to don't sleep. Don't go to sleep because you're set up. You've set it up. So you there are always rules set up in a majority of movies. And and there are rules set up in superhero movies to where how does that person fly? Well, they explain you how they fly. There are rules and there are ways. But you still have to suspend disbelief. Of course. Totally. You have to suspend disbelief in all movies. Right. But what I'm saying is, you, but you have to also tell me what the rules are of the film because there's one particular thing that happens in this movie uh -huh. that I'm going, well, wait. They show that you could do that already. Mm -hmm. Why didn't that character just do that again? Because you're inside the character's mind and you don't actually know what's real. That's the no, whole point. No, no, no. It's not, you know, it, that's not, <laughs> Thank you, Cody. But that's not the point where I'm going. That's and that's, not, that's those not are the what, best movies, the ones that like, actually like, mess it, with so you. Like, it's it, and I'll tell you after the break. But it's like something that I said. And I was talking to Perry about it. Who, who again? When I talk to her, thinks it's a masterpiece. And I yes. think that people throw the word masterpiece around way too easily. I don't the know Godfather if it's a Two I just is a masterpiece. It. Godfather okay. Two. The Godfather yes. Two is definitely a masterpiece. Right. So, so to me, I don't think it's a masterpiece. But I said, to, and I'm asking these questions that I had, and she's like, right. "Well, if that's a masterpiece. Kind of, I'm out." She's like, you have to kind of think about if this thing happened, you might have. I'm like, I don't want to know about might. This is a particular plot point that should have been explained. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I want to talk about too, and I'm not going to get too deep into this because I know I know that socially I'm not allowed to. Um, but like, and I, I want to know your opinion on this. Uh, so Jordan Peele yesterday came out and said that his, his the statement that he made was that he will he's he, as for as long as he's oh, making right, movies, right. he's not going to cast a white guy in the lead role. He said because he's mm -hmm. seen that movie already. Uh -huh. I think this goes back to the same point about Brie Larson that I made. Mm -hmm. Like Brie Larson, who made a great point, I think, about the fact that there needs to be more people being included in these press conferences. Mm -hmm. I just think that she went about doing it the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. I think that she because it's hard to speak words sometimes properly. Because <laughs> I, because I think I think that Jordan Peele. This is my personal opinion, and whether you want to come and yell at me and say that all this stuff. My personal opinion is that he could have done exactly what he had said, mm -hmm. just done it. Oh, this still smells bad. <laughs> but he could have. But he could have just. But I switched with you. But I mean, he could have just done it. Yeah, totally. And, yeah. Like yeah. to where he could have said, like, if someone, if someone blatantly asked him, "Will you ever have a white person in your in your movies?" He could just answer the question of like, "I like the way I'm making movies right now. I'll probably continue to do the way that I'm doing." It. Sure. And he does have Point white people in it. He just means he race? didn't want some. He, he doesn't want to hire somebody in the lead role. Is what he it's said. Yeah. it's oh, racism. Yeah. No matter what, when you put because yesterday I got attacked on Twitter by a person that said you can't attack Diana Ross for being a strong black woman supporting a, a black. Man. Nothing to do with it race. has nothing to do with race at all. Whatever, if you, if a white guy came and said, "I'm never going to put a black guy in a movie," that he is a racist, he's out of Hollywood. But Jordan right. Peele comes and said he's not going to put a white guy in a movie. That's also racist. Well, that's saw, racist. And I saw Jay Washington's tweet to it. was like, "Well, that's been happening for a year." But the, sure, but but does that mean that it's does that mean that it's it's not wrong? The, it's, does it mean it's not wrong? The, no. the, the sentiment makes sense. It's the way that it was worded. Hundred yeah. percent. That's that's, that's, that's the, 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 the sentiment is like it's it's. I think most of these people, what they're trying to do in Hollywood is include is have inclusive and I'll, I'll, right? I'll give you an there's example. been opportunities for a certain set yeah. of, of types of people for a very long time and all that people are trying to do is to have different demographics also be included absolutely and here's here's the thing though you know who's been you know who did who's already been doing this and didn't make a statement like this is mm -hmm. Tyler Perry sure right. Tyler Perry is somebody who has done exactly this right. and because and I understand for Jordan Peele he's he's right in the fact that he now is in a position where he can focus right. people that he grew up with, yeah. that he sees, right. his culture, he can and do he, that. And, and he, he has that right. And he yeah. has the right to do that. But to say it, 
to he say, just said to, it wrong. but to yeah. say it wrong like that, he like again, like if he just would have said like, I like the way I'm. If someone said, how come there are no white people in your movies, or white leads in your right. movies, and he and he said, like again, I like the way I'm making movies. I'm telling stories that I want to tell the way I want to tell mm-hmm. them. And then you go, well, that's that's the way. Was he, wants he to do actually it. asked that? I don't know. How, I don't know how it came. Okay, I don't know how it came okay. out. But it's just like but because it's, because that's the thing. On, on the other hand, too, what we're talking about. Yes, like we do need more inclusivity, and I'm glad that that we're you're seeing. I still am waiting for a Hispanic superhero. Sure. Like, like other, As you other than you know, Miles Morales is half Hispanic, right. I guess. But still. But um, so I want to see myself represented on screen, right? That would be nice because I rarely do, and it's usually a stereotype that I and that I see. I'm right? not saying that you um, shouldn't want right, right, that. Right. And that like, but at the same time, then I, it actually does. It's weird, and I and I'm guilty of this in the past of making like white people jokes like on Twitter where it's like oh white people do this yeah I, like I, I'm not I'm not necessarily saying that's racism but like you are uh, you know grouping a, you're you have a group of people that you're attacking sort of even if you mean it as like a funny joke right. and yeah. so I'm kind of like straying away from that now where I don't want to be like oh like you don't just don't generalize do right. you not just see don't, just Danny Trejo as Boots as a, a great representation of a superhero? Come on. From your, I mean, no. do you see yourself in I that? I don't want to be Boots true. for Halloween, but look, Brett. Hey, it's, a good, it's a great conversation, and, and I know there are going to be a lot of people yeah. that... And I and I get it too. Into where, like I said, when I mentioned Jay Washington's tweet, there they say, "Well, people get up in arms because he said this." Well, guess what? It's been happening to us forever. Yeah. It doesn't take away that it's been happening right. to you, you forever. Right. It just means that we shouldn't. We, it shouldn't be done by anybody. Correct. Right. Just, just, by just anybody. try to be careful with the words, and, yeah. and it's hard. And, and that's why I don't. I don't fault Jordan Peele because, like, I also mess up my words all the time. But it is important to also, like Josh was saying, like, don't generalize. Right. It's don't not, say like white people this. It's yeah. not like the Lauren Hill when she came out. And she's like. I don't want white people listening to my music, right? right? It's not, he's, he's not saying no, that. No, 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 no. He's just saying that he's seen that he's, he, basically what he was saying was that we have not been represented for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And the majority of movies that I've seen kind of growing up have had white leads in them forever. Mm-hmm. I am in a position of power right now that I don't have to do that. Yeah. I can give more opportunities to people of color. I can yeah. do that now. And I will continue to do that because right. those are the stories I want to tell. He says Great. that, I go, I get it. Right. Mm-hmm. I get it. But it's when, just because he said the word. Yeah, I, white. Feel, I feel weird. I'm like, should I not be watch, Should right. I not be like watching? His, like, right. what, what, what should I do? Like, Does he not like me? And he's like, oh, I like, I like him. I've just seen those movies before. I'm like, oh, I, I feel yeah. weird. Totally. I feel like I'm he doesn't you, like dude. me. I'm with you. Yeah, and I know and, and, and and he I said get... that. He said that straight up that that's not the case. Right. And, but... It would be the same if anybody said anything about any – it's like Mexican, any race, Indian, right. whatever. It's like I'm not going to put anybody in my movie that's white. I'm not going to yeah. put anybody in my movie that's Indian. It's all still racism when you boil it down to it. Well, it's it, racism. Well, it's – but there's also levels of racism, right? Yeah. Totally. Like, like there's, there's... I, I think it's more ignorance than anything exactly. else, Exactly. Like I don't, I don't necessarily I don't believe he's, I don't believe that Jordan Peele is a racist. Of course not. I, I, I yeah. don't. I just – I think that he said – I just said he I, – like I said – I just believe that he has gotten himself, because of how creative he is, because of how talented he is, he's been able to put himself in a position now that he can do what hasn't been able to be done yeah. for a very long time. Right. And he has the right to do it. Um, but like you said, and the same thing with Brie Larson, it's just the way you say things. Mm-hmm. And I understand. I understand a lot of people are like, well, this is for, finally someone's saying it. Someone's able to say yeah. it. But it doesn't help the overall yeah. problem because no matter what, somebody like me, I'm not like, I'm not mad. I just feel, I'm like, Hurt by the statement, you know, and it's it's just one of those things to where, and you can say, oh, too bad, you're hurt. But regardless, there are a lot of people that are going to be up in arms for that, and it doesn't need to be. Exactly. Because Because you can make those statements. Stop the polarization of it all. Right, but because you can make those statements without excluding anybody. Right, right, right. Because you can still, you can give opportunity to people that do deserve it, because like I said, a lot of us haven't seen ourselves as represented as you guys. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't, we don't need to exclude you guys either. Exactly, because here's the thing. We're not trying to exclude anybody. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what right now. I don't want to see a white lead in his movies. Yeah. I think what he does, I think I've learned more about because from from culturally what he he has set up the way that he has set up his characters interesting people interesting families I've seen and I, and I feel and I've related to a lot of those families as well too mm-hmm. and that what of what he set up in the characters and what he's been able to do I've I, I can see what he's doing, and I'm like, you know what? Keep doing that. But it's just, it's when it was said, it was, it's just weird. I mean, I, mean, I did have a problem also with like every rabbit in his movie was white. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. There you go. All right, listen, we're gonna go to break, and I have an ice cube. Little, little little back end. <laughs> yeah, um, we are gonna go to break. When we get back, we're gonna talk about Avengers. Three hours long, trying to get this ice cube done. Later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey, Collider fans, John Roca here. Look that behind me. There it is, Collider Sports. That's right, that is happening. We've got some great programming on there already. For those of you that have already watched, thanks so much. we got so much coming down the pike. We're talking about NFL. We're going to talk about NBA. There's plans about NHL. Golf is in the equation now. And, of course, the Premier League show that I host with Jack Hind, that's been in motion for the last couple of weeks. And then an MMA show is on the way from Dennis Zhang, me, and Jay Williams. All those things are happening here at Collider. And, look, we want to hear from you, so we want you to listen. We want you to watch if you're a sports fan. Even if you're not a sports fan, we might entertain you, teach you something new about a sport that you may not have known much about or maybe so deep into it that you wanted to learn even more about it. We've got you covered. You can do that. Follow us on iTunes and on YouTube. You can there watch all the shows uh, or listen to all the shows that you want and then leave us comments and rate uh, the shows as well and review them. And then let us know what other sports you want us to cover. Look, we're not touching rugby. I'll just tell you that right now. That's as far out as we'll go uh, or cricket but uh, maybe in the future if we go collider worldwide that's certainly a possibility but for right now collider sports is there for you take a look at it take a watch and let us know what you think oh hi guys it's perry here and i am going to tell you about the witching hour it is the show that i host along with collider.com's Haley Fouch. It is in podcast form on the Collider factory feed. And we also have the video up and running every Tuesday for you right there on the Collider podcast YouTube channel. We talk about everything horror. We're talking TV, movies, the newest releases. We talk about movies that are celebrating anniversaries. We've even talked about books. It's crazy. If it is scary, we are talking about it on The Witching Hour. We also have so many filmmaker interviews, really cool stuff. It's all coming your way every single Tuesday on The Witching Hour. Check it out. Collider Factory and the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. Ugh. Hello, Collider Live. My name is Amy Dallin. And I'm Corey Jondro. And we host a little show we love called Collider Heroes. And it is all of the things we love about movies, TV, comics themselves, all the breaking news, trailers, photos, but not paparazzi photos. <laughs> all of the superhero stuff we love, all of the indie comic stuff we love, all the stuff you had no idea was based on comics. 80 years of comic lore have led to this show and many years in film and TV, and we're living in a golden age of comics, and we want to share all of that zeal with you folks. So we talk about the stuff that's coming out, we talk about what we hope is coming out, we do fantasy casting of things that should exist, why don't they exist? And we do your Twitter questions asking directly to us what we think of certain things, and every single week, since we both actually love and read physical comics, buy and print, we have a comic pull list where our five biggest favorite books of the week come out, and we dive into those with you guys. You can buy digital, I'll forgive you, as long as you're paying for your comics, it's all good. But if you buy in print, you can bag them and board them, and then they're worth more later, because comics are like certain things from the 90s that are totally worth the value. Buy comics, <laughs> buy in print. Digital's never worth anything later. Buy in print, keep comic stores alive. Or we can debate collector's items all day long. We can debate casting, we can debate movie, movie news. We can have all of our friends come join us, as we frequently do. We can ask professionals about their work. We've had some amazing guests come by the show. Yep. We try and we to can catch it every Wednesday. That are on these properties that also love comics. You hear what it's like from their perspective, from inside, from outside. And this is all with the focus of bringing all this news to you guys. And we're here every Wednesday on Collider. And we love this stuff and want to share it with you guys. We'll see you then. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. That's right, they gave Riley his own podcast. The Riley Roundtable is on its new home. It drops every Thursday. The Riley Roundtable is a little bit about everything. It's about movies and life, life and movies and everything in between. I like to have on special guests for discussions like Justice League versus Batman v Superman, for discussions about wine tasting, for discussions about UFOs, and everything in between. That's right, the Riley Roundtable drops on Thursdays on the one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff podcast feed, and later on Collider Video's own podcast video network. So check it out every Thursday, the Riley Roundtable. See you there. Hey, everyone. John Roca here, one of the hosts for Collider Sports Time. That's our new show there on the Collider Sports Network. It's our flagship show, just like Collider Movie Talk. We get on, talk about a bunch of sports issues of the day and what is burning up social media what topics are burning up social media that's what we do on collider sports time i'm joined by my top 10 co-host matt nost me and him we welcome a bevy of guests every week to talk about nfl the major league baseball playoffs nhl and the nba which is starting up soon we're going to talk about that we also get into ufc stuff college football 
all the stuff that's happening in the world of sports. We're going to cover it on Collider Sports Time. And we're going to take the time to break it all down and give our opinions and our unique takes and unfiltered thoughts on what we think about the sports news of the day. So don't forget to join us every week on Monday for the Collider Sports Time show on the Collider Sports Network. And don't forget to subscribe on the Collider Sports Network on YouTube and on the Collider Sports Podcast feed. We're going to bring you all kinds of stuff. Hope to hear from you soon. We're down one Makuga, um, and it's me, Darina, and Brett Sheridan. And I forgot to mention, uh, to let everybody know here, that tomorrow, Friday, March 29th, Shazam in IMAX, everybody. Collider is hosting an IMAX screening of Shazam with a Q&A with the director, David Sandberg, and star, Zach Levi. That's right. So head on over to Collider.com for details on how you can attend the screening. That's tomorrow in IMAX, Shazam. And speaking of Shazam, one of the standout performances from that movie um, was Marta Milans, by the way. So she is in the film. She plays the... Um, Foster mom. Rosa to, Vasquez, I think, is her name. Yeah. Yeah. And the character's she, name. To Billy, she plays her his foster mom. And she's coming in and we're gonna talk to her. I thought the foster parents really stole the movie because you didn't get you didn't really know what their role was gonna be. I didn't have enough of a background to know how relevant they were if, in the comics or anything right. in general. And they bring a nice warm feel to it and I'm excited to talk to to Marta when she comes in. So um, let's talk about. You got enough ice there. <laughs> yeah, you, see, you, you missed. You missed to see what I did. So I had. I. I, I just go in. They have these bags of ice in the refrigerator. So weird. I go in with my two paws and I'm holding, <laughs> like holding them up. A lot of them. So Dorina goes to walk in. I just let it go. And it, and it falls like all Elsa. over the table and yeah. the carpet. That's a perfect way to yeah. do it. Nice. There you go. So nice for the ice. <laughs> Avengers is going to be three hours long. End game. Oh. Three hours. They should long. have intermission like old school. I just had this conversation this morning. I was on Heidi and Frank, um, and we had this conversation about uh, about uh, whether or not it should be uh, an intermission. Yeah. I, I think I don't think we're in that time anymore. And I, the other reason I love I miss intermission. People just, need to pee. Yeah. Yeah, but the reason and why get more food and yeah. drinks. Yeah, but the problem with intermission is, let's say you're on such a rhythm, and about an hour and a half is mm-hmm. when you have the intermission, right? And then you're out of it. And you got to get back into you're talking to people about it. what you saw so far. You're not you're not as I- engaged anymore. But when it's a movie that long, you can make you can film the movie in a way that there is a break or I like know. a to be continued. Yeah. But I just I it's I can I can I can deal with it. I'm going to be so locked into this final chapter that we're all going to miss part of it yeah. at some someone's point. Someone's going to have to pay. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, of course. And I think that they'll probably be aware of that too. And and that's also a repeat viewing part too. It just I would guess there there is a I forget is there an app or we at least talked about an app um, to where you can pee uh, you, you find oh right 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 you where you, you can which, find when you should go when pee. you should pee yeah. well yeah, yeah. this was my idea is the the bathroom has a uh, a mirror that is it's in behind the seats and you can run real quick and come around and it's a two way mirror where you know where it's a, uh, on the other side you can watch as you're pissing <laughs> and, then, and, and then run back out and you miss none of the movies and then people right. can see you pee no no that's the thing that's the it's like the cop glass it's the, the it's oh. on the on the theater side like, it's a it's a mirror it's clear yeah. where you can actually see the other way yeah okay, but okay. you can see huh. from the so it's there's a little door so you kind of back yourself in and then you run into the bathroom right. real quick yeah, there's urinals there I don't know for the ladies how this will work maybe a, f- a little screen well, or we something we can get one of those cup things yeah so what they are they called sports games. yeah you can watch you can still watch the game yeah that's something where you can do because i have i mean i can barely make it through a two-hour film yeah. Um, yeah i remember back in the day i'm sure a lot of fans do when i saw excalibur on uh <laughs> on cable that actually had an intermission cable used to have those really? for longer films that would have intermission yeah. the so. patrick stewart movie right? it's before you could pause television uh, um no this, uh, was it patrick stewart it was a damn duty judy yeah Dench. it's an old yeah. school yeah. excalibur yeah. for and helen mirror and yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. I don't know why. It was a little raunchy for my age at the time. I, I remember it was a little. Uh... This is the stupidest thing. I don't know. Just because I'm. I in know a, that was I'm a stupid. No, no, no. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in an immature. I'm in an immature mood all, together. I want to show you something. Just Cody, today. <laughs> so Ellis and I, for a long time, we we do a show called uh, the Best and Worst, to where we break mm-hmm. down the best movie for somebody and the worst movie for somebody. And we were doing it for years. Um, we just stopped doing it around. I don't know, maybe a year or two ago. But um, bring up the best and worst of Kate Blanchett. 
What is the worst of her? Well, did I, she do worse? I want to show you. I want to show you something in particular Man. that was, it's. I would like to be the worst, worst of Kate okay. Blanchett. So She's let's uh, bring it, and I'll tell you to scan through it once we get past the commercial, Cody. If, uh, and there's one particular no, moment. I want Reese's. Yeah, this is to show you this. Is uh, that Reese's the, cereal. Yeah. Two no, commercials? no, I think it was cookies. Oh. Yeah, but anyway, the, I, I really miss this series, the best and worst that we used to do. We didn't, didn't have a long time, but just scan through a little bit, and I'll uh, I'll tell you exactly when. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. I, I know. These knuckleheads. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Oh, I didn't know Topher Grace was with me. I know. It's is it? Yeah. Oh, it's right now, right now. Go back a little bit. Okay, right here, right here. Just play this part here. Turn it up. Yeah. Robin Hood was almost there, but it. I, I, nah, 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 it's about worst. Indiana Jones. Anytime I can put Indiana Jones mm. 4 on there, it gets on there. She Kingdom. is playing the Russian, Crystal. and it just oh. was so cartoony. <laughs> and she, when you make, when you, I, I remember when she was cast, I'm like, oh, that's going to be a great villain. And it's a throwaway. I mean, Allison Duty was a far, Duty was a far <laughs> more recognizable villain. Look at Allison. That's what I got to work with. I got a guy that thinks, oh, hey, look at me, him. Duty, push most. <laughs> Watch it, it keeps going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it is my duty to bring this back to Providence. And I'm going to say that my worst Kate Blanchett film of all time is a movie that actually smelled like duty. I thought it'd be good. <laughs> oh, Monuments Men. I'm holding this together. Remember Monuments Men? How excited I was for that movie? Yeah. It's supposed to come out. <laughs> it's a pizza tune. <laughs> Okay. Keep going. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're crying. <laughs> anyway, all right, that's good. Uh, anyway, so man, the, I missed that show. The best and worst. Funny. Yeah, we used to do. I it. forgot. That's so funny. I blocked. Uh, I blocked out a. Uh, uh, Crystal, Crystal Skull that I forgot she was uh, in it. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a shit yeah. movie. It's a shit movie. Right, um, C Cody, go to the uh, Facebook group for a second. He was, he's showing my... He went back there with like a Del Toro film. Um, yeah, let's go to the... Are there any questions that people got popping up here? I don't know. But listen, as far as the <laughs> as far as far as the, the length goes for the movie, I, I don't have a problem with it. The, the question is, though... Because there's so many, they're gonna put it in every theater, and there's gonna be so many show times. Mm -hmm. Will it hurt the box office at all? I don't think it will. Mm -hmm. I think that people are still gonna go see that movie three or four times in the theater. I saw. Yeah, I mean, I saw. Crazy. I saw Infinity War three times in the theater. Wow. I mean, I only saw it once, but you that's know, so, but that's because I'm a contrarian. Um, yeah. But uh, I mean, and, and also it's gonna make the most movie ever of any other movie, right? Yeah. Like it's gonna, more it, than Episode Nine, like every uh, opening weekend or yeah. in general. In general. In general. Oh, in general, actually. In general, right. it's got to beat Avatar. Um, do I, no, I just mean uh, the, out of any weekend. new movie. Yeah. Opening weekend, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, opening weekend, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. projected to make something like two forty-five or two fifty, something ridiculous, that's and insane. it'll it'll make more than that. And that's why they should make Alien movies because well, they already have enough money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but they don't want to lose money. I mean, you make money by making money. No, you're right. These they shouldn't make these anymore. They made way too much money. <laughs> <laughs> They should give us some of the money. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know. Can I, I have a little piece I, of that? Just a little bit. I just are you gonna go see this? Uh, you gonna see this one in the theater? I don't know. Three hours for this my bladder. Long is a, time. They call me Shot Glass Bladder Sheridan. And, did you see uh, the first one in the theater? Um, I did, no? did. No, that one was the one that I fell asleep with my wife, and then okay. I saw it in uh, like Dusseldorf in a lounge. <laughs> so oh. I finished it up there. So uh, see, I can't do that for that movie. I gotta see that. That's there's certain movies you just gotta see in the theater. That's why. Like there's like perfect example is the dirt. The dirt is a is a good Netflix movie. I don't need to see that movie in the theater. The Avengers Endgame I need to see in the theater. What what are you as a fan of MCU movies and in general this story? What are you so excited or expect to see in this movie? And like what you know because you loved Infinity War, right? Yeah. I just liked it fine. I loved it. Yeah. So yeah. you so I want to know why you loved it and why you're looking forward to this so much. Well, I love the first I, I, because the reason I love the first one so much before Infinity War, Winter Soldier was my favorite. MCU movie. Yeah. That's um, still my favorite. Yeah, it's because this is my favorite Avenger movie for sure. It is everything that I wanted from comic books and the way that watching all the heroes kind of fight together. It's also, if you jump into that movie for your first movie, <laughs> I can understand why people are like, there's no real development. All the development comes from the previous films. All the right. development comes from the investment that I've made. I mm -hmm. just think that it is a, I think that I was given a promise by the studio, this is what we're all leading up to. And I believe that promise was fulfilled. 
I believe that when I was watching it, okay, this is the greatest because up until well, it was funny right beforehand, Killmonger was the best MCU villain. But before Killmonger, the MCU villains have been bad. shit. They've been bad, shitty. Bad, bad. Yeah, I mean it's, uh, Loki, like Loki, Loki, but he's but not he's really. Like, he and he wound up turning like he's if wrestling terms, he's heel, he's face. You don't know what the <laughs> right. hell he is. Um, but there had never been like a real like Darth Vader kind of Palpatine type. And Thanos fit that for me. It was Thanos' movie. And see, I thought yeah. Thanos had the best story mm -hmm. because, and you had to set that up. And it is Thanos' story all the way through. So to answer your question as far as what I think is going to happen, uh, it, it, this is to me, this is a bit going back to the predictability conversation. I'm okay in the fact everyone's gonna live. We know this. So that's so that's that. Yeah. I'm asking because I'm like you. You we were talking about predictability earlier yeah. and how you don't like it, but it's like I could see everything happening in Infinity War. Sure, and I think and I feel like it's gonna be the same. I'm just going to enjoy it as like a fun popcorn flick. Yeah. It's just like I don't. I didn't cry. I didn't have any emotional investment. Like I just they didn't get me. I, it, like, you yeah, know, does I, that make I, sense? I, so that's what I'm trying absolutely. to understand why you'll it got be you. sad if no one actually dies. Correct. Right, because the predict <laughs> because the predictability <laughs> for one standalone film and a story that I don't that I'm not familiar with as mm -hmm. opposed to a this is a television show and I've been saying it it's mm -hmm. just a television show that happens to be released in movie theaters mm -hmm. so the same way that I think that a lot of the Game of Thrones could be you could predict kind of what's going to happen and I hope that happens there was a certain character that came back in mm -hmm. Game of Thrones right that was predictable mm -hmm. that everyone knew it was going to happen but it was satisfying mm -hmm. and so you know that because the other reason why they've told you that they're going to do certain things Spider-Man has an, another movie coming out okay. so you know he's coming <laughs> yeah. back Yeah, you know yeah. there are other Black Panther has another movie that's why the poster where Spider-Man's dead is funny yeah he's yeah. It's, it's coming and, but, but, they, but they're telling <laughs> so I'm like, you no he's not yeah but they're telling yeah. you that though they're, yeah. they're basically telling you all these characters are going to come back you, you know that they're not trying to pretend but it's that, not about that to me like to me it's just about hitting certain emotional points like like with Gamora, yeah, like I, I actually that really didn't get you. No, okay. I actually really because I actually really liked Thanos. Like I thought they did a really good job with the way he was written, mm -hmm. and uh, but those moments where people were actually dying, like it's not that I saw them coming. It's like the emotional moments didn't hit for me. Similar okay. to like uh, when uh, Han Solo died. Yeah, see, I, I would understand that for Force Awakens. It did get me in Avengers, especially Tom Holland's performance, because he's, he's, just, great. he's yeah. just a scared kid. Yeah. He didn't know he's what really was happening, good. and he played that because he, it was consistent throughout the whole movie, not just in right. the sadness parts and like the, the stuff where he just doesn't get everything. He's like, oh, we're calling each other by our, our superhero names? Yeah. Like, he's he's the one that, that, yeah. got, that got, got me. You. Nobody else did. Okay. Um, the, see, I, I got it when, like, when Groot. When Groot went mm -hmm. and Rocket, because when Rocket, because another reason of consistency, Rocket for the most part is always cracking jokes, oh, pretty hard in shell. Right. So when he's like, no, no, Groot, no, like that, that got me. The fact, the way that they did it with uh, with Black Panther, when he is just, this is no place to die, and then he goes. Mm -hmm. the, the, it, it worked. The the because of the past relationships with with. Um, Bucky and Cap because mm -hmm. of how deep that relationship was that he's the first to go and he's just up there. But it's because of these other movies. Correct. More so, more so than what's happening on screen. Absolutely. So and, that's, I, and I, So that's the answer as far as the predictability and the emotion goes because I've had all these other movies exactly. to where um, w us hasn't had the luxury of setting up all these other movies mm -hmm. to make me care and, and give and give them the right to say, okay, look, we're not going to do too much setup in this one because we give you all the setup in these other movies. The, this has earned that to me, so this franchise. Mm -hmm. But as far as what I expect, them to come back, a time shift. There's some kind of time shift. Is it 11.30 already? I guess it's 11.30. Uh, it's almost 11.30. Okay, look, we're going to go to break. They want us to go to break. We're going to go. We're gonna speak to, she is in Shazam. Marta M Milans is here, and we're going to talk to her. And once again, just let everybody know that we are going to be screening Shazam for you guys tomorrow, March 29th. Collider's hosting an IMAX screening of Shazam with, with the Q&A with director David Sandberg, Zach <laughs> Levi. Head on over to Collider.com for details on how you can attend the screening. What happened? He's being awesome. I'm just enjoying this wide shot by myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, not anymore. Remember to start doing your <laughs> Christian right. thing. We're going to we're gonna go to break. When we get back, we're going to talk to Martha Malone's about Shazam. Shazam. No, it's not late to the party. That's actually from Obi-Wan Kenobi. You didn't know that? Well, you should, and now you do. Jedi Council, what is it? 
it's about Star Wars, obviously. It's Jedi Council. Every week, the latest and greatest in Star Wars movie news, myself and Ken Knapsack, that's right, the pit boss himself. We have a guest on, and we talk about everything happening in the world of Star Wars. If it's the movie news, the TV news, canon news, comic books, games. And then we take questions from you guys on Facebook and Twitter. It's a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a couple of years now. I'm still excited talking about it. The fan base is coming together again. I believe it is. I think it is. I hope it is. And we're talking Star Wars, so we like you. That's right. All of you, if you're not a fan of Star Wars, come on over and join us every Thursday for Collider Jedi Council here on Collider Video. And we have an Apple Podcast feed or Podcast One, wherever you want to go if you listen to podcasts. And not only do you get Collider Jedi Council every week on Thursday, The Rule of Two with Mark Fernandez and Mark Riley, that's on every week. I believe it drops on Wednesday. It's on one of these days. It's a good show. You should listen to it. I like it. I listen to it. I haven't listened to it once. Hey, guys. Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com. And if you're a pro wrestling fan, which... I hope you are, even if it's in secret, then you should be checking out Wrestling Sheet Radio Weekly. Uh, we've got a bunch of shows in the podcast feed. We've got weekly recaps from myself and John Roca, which you guys will probably know from the Collider family. Uh, that's for Raw. That's for SmackDown. We've also got the weekly roundup of wrestling news. It's a show I host called Wrestling Sheet Radio with Jamie Ivey and Elijah Bates. And we've also got a bunch of other stuff in our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. So check it out. Subscribe. And I hope you guys dig it. Hey guys, Perry here to remind you to tune in for Collider Movie Talk every single Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 4 p.m. PT live. We are live. We talk about movies. We answer your live Twitter questions. It's so much fun. We talk about everything from box office to all your favorite superhero movies. We talk about horror on a good day for me. And who knows, maybe even a spoonerism will happen. I don't know. That's what happens when you watch Collider 2 v Mock, right? Are you going to watch? You better watch. Go watch now. What's up, Collider fans? If you are a fan of television and you want to watch a guy that looks like me and a guy named Thad Williams talk about TV every single Friday, subscribe to the Collider channel. Collider Podcast is where you can find the video. Uh, we have our own iTunes feed, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. You can find it on iTunes or wherever you find your podcast and you listen to them in your ear holes. That's where Collider TV Talk comes at you. We talk about TV news. We talk about shows we love, shows that we don't love. And most importantly, we don't read any books because... TV has nothing to do with reading. We also have a show called Hypothetical Questions with myself and Roxy Stryer and all kinds of reviews right here at the Collider Podcast channel and the Collider TV Talk feed. Subscribe, rate, like, tell your friends, tell all your friends to tell their friends, and before you know it, it's a pyramid scheme of television. I'm Josh McCuga. You can see Thad Williams and myself along with Roxy Stryer and all the Collider personalities all the time right here on Collider TV Talk. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. Rule of Two is a Star Wars podcast hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. It drops on the Jedi Council podcast feed every Tuesday. You like Star Wars? Good. I like Star Wars. And you know what we do? We talk Star Wars. And not only talking Star Wars, we celebrate Star Wars. We gave the Golden Lightsabers the best in Star Wars, best picture, best opening theme, best crawl, and all that good stuff. We celebrate the games of Star Wars. We do everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of debate and a lot of discussion thrown in the middle. So make sure you check out Rule of Two every Tuesday on the Collider Jedi Council podcast feed on iTunes and later on Collider Video. That's Rule of Two with Riley and Mark Fernandez every Tuesday. And may the force be with you. What I said was, don't you try to stay up with, because I know what you're going to do in Chicago. You're going to try to get everybody to come out on Friday night and stay out late. Don't Why? Why Friday because Saturday we got to do the show. But why am I getting people out on Friday? Because you're you're gonna do it the whole weekend, or the whole week. It depends on how tired I am. All right. Well. Oh, hi, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Marta. Marta here. Hello, Marta. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Please, Marta Mullins from Shazam. Shazam. Yes, please. Bienvenida. Yeah, sure. Bienvenida, gracias. Hello. Hola, everybody. Yeah, so <laughs> thank you for joining us today. 
Um, I have to tell you that I, because I saw, obviously, and we knew Shazam was coming out, and we wanted to see, we you get the big pitch of, like, it's big for superhero movies. And what I did not expect, and I said this in my review, and I will say it to you, I did not expect to care so much in, for, I didn't know, you didn't even know about your character that even existed. Yeah. You guys, the way that you set it up, this it's it, it adds this bit of warmth, totally. and it, it, it takes away from, because a lot of times, you know, I believe in film, and foster families, foster, they, they get a bad rap sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that was not the case here. You see what this family does. You see how they care. You see how they shape they shape this whole dynamic of ultimately how Billy kind of warms up. It's totally true, yeah. You guys did such an amazing job with that. Thank you. I thank really, you. And, and it worked. It, it absolutely worked. And I thought that you guys kind of stole a lot of those scenes. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. I, I feel like, you know, besides it being an amazing, you know, superhero movie and having all yeah. the fun parts of that and the, the action stuff and, you know, Zach flying around with a cape and right. all that stuff, which is awesome. And every time that I see it, I'm like, oh, wait, I am in a, in a superhero movie? Right. <laughs> like, I get to be in one of those scenes? Um, but the, the reality and the beauty of the message, I think, is that what it transmits is the sense of family. And right. like my character and Cooper's character bring family to this kid who ultimately, the entire point of his journey is to find a home. Right. Mm -hmm. He's find, trying to find a home, trying to find his mom. And then when, when we present him with a home filled with love and crazy kids and from all over the place and all backgrounds and all ethnicities, then all of a sudden he... He's, you know, reluctant to it at the beginning, but right. he keeps coming back home. And I think not only is that so heartwarming and, 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 and joyful, but also to all the kids out there in the world that actually feel like they don't belong or they don't have a home or they're orphans or they've been abandoned or they're not, right. you know, they're not, they don't feel loved to tell them, you know what? It's not the family that you're born into. It's the family that can be created, you know? And I think people like Rosa exist in the world I, and you're make right. family. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that because I, I, I'd been kind of beating myself up. Um, that we had we had a guest on not too long ago, uh, probably like two months ago, and we were talking, and I caught myself because what I had said was, because you know, he was adopted and he was talking, and I and I, and he, I, I maybe met his, his birth parents a couple times. And I said, I said, well, and I just asked him about those, about his birth parents, but what I said was, I said, well, let's talk about your real parents. And in my head, I'm like, to him, that's not his real parents. Yeah, his real no. his, his birth parents were biological, uh, biological parents. But yeah. and his real parent, or the definition of parent, is someone who does teach you about life, teaches you those yeah, lessons, who gives you love. That's Correct. all it is. Right. All the child wants is to is, is to be to be given love, and if in whatever form that is, whether they birthed you or whether your parents died and someone comes along and just gives you love, ultimately that's what you're going to connect with. Yeah. And I feel like that's why Billy comes back home because all we do is be like, hey, you're not judged, even if you're not perfect, even if, you know, Freddie has a handicap, even if, you know, Darla's parents died and, you know, she was abandoned, like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm going to love you. I have so much love to give. You know? Yeah, it's funny because the kids, it's, because bo they're both here right now. I know, now that was in the back. They, they, they shouldn't hear us. Did you know they were going to be here? I did not know. Oh, that's know. so funny. They were like, Mama Rosa, Mama Rosa. And I opened the door like, and yeah. they were like all hugging. Have they kind of become like your your, your kids kind 100%. of too? 100%. Yeah. When, I mean, I negotiate with the parents, the real parents constantly like, I get it, man, but can I get to kid now? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, Is right. that what they actually call you? Mama, Mama Rosa? Rosa? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. It, all, awesome. it, all, it all happened when we got to Toronto like a week and a half before starting to shoot and you know, I come from a big family in Spain and, and uh, aunts, con cousins, friends that are, are, I call family, you know. And I worked with kids um, in my charities all my life. It's been my thing. I guess that's not a coincidence why I ended up right, getting that's what you're going to say, yeah. Um, but it's specifically with this uh, foster group, um, this nun organization in Madrid that they just take kids. And we would go and assist to help them with homework and, like, guide them. And there's a specific... Uh, family of, I mean, siblings whose mom is uh, drug, all these terrible stories, and the father is you know, not there, and they, you know, and the mom has had kids with many different men, and but they are all siblings because they, have, they share the same mom, and it's schizophrenic, like, it's right, really right. sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of them are now, you know, one of them is working in Germany, he's doing his second master's degree. That's the great. Other, she's at a flight yeah. attendant. So, I, I, 
not I didn't foster them because they didn't stay at, at our at our family home, but we, we've been with them. You know, we. But came. you're involved, and you got to see them kind of do these things. So yeah. and, well, you mentioned you, we joked about it, but it's like you, like you said, it's not a, it's not a coincidence that you. That's probably one of the reasons yeah. you got this role. So but when when yeah. I got when I got the role, I called I called one of them and I, got, and I emailed them and I said, oh, you know, imagine this, you know, you need to tell me what to do. And they're like, no, but you you are her. That's so right. You know, and I was like, oh, oh, I guess. I guess it's, I guess I am, you know. And um, so when I got to Toronto and I wanted to meet all the kids, because I said, "Listen, I'm great with kids. I will win over a child in between a minute and minute and forty five seconds. Yeah, I'm, I'm de- it doesn't matter. I, I, you can time me. Do they ever test your patience though? Um, this is, this is, oh yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> young actors. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know? yeah. But um, but I said, you know, I need to bond with them. There's no way you can. There's no way you can fake familiarity on right. screen. Right. You cannot do that. And especially with children, like, yeah, they are actors, but they're kids, you yeah. know. And if I'm going to be transmitting that sense of love and support in on camera, like, I, I can't just hug a 10-year-old that just met me right. And, right. and make her feel safe, you know. So we did so many, like, activities, you know, escape rooms. Right. And, I, I heard you were kind of like their, the off-screen mom as well before production started. And you actually, yeah. like, kind of took them to an escape rooms and, like, movies and, and all movies, this stuff. And you hung out. and waffle right. sessions at home. Like, all kinds of, like, slime making that they ruined all my designer oh. clothes <laughs> in the process. Oh, and all the it's okay. It's fine. It's just Dolce <laughs> Gabbana. Don't worry, you know. Meanwhile, <laughs> you know? like, steam coming out of your ears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. But um, that's where the whole Mama Rosa thing originated. Okay. So then when we started filming... And they were running around on set being like, Mama Rosa, let's do this, Mama Rosa. You know, one of our producers was like, I don't, how did this, wait, Ms. Milan's? And I said, it's called Homer. <laughs> so, uh, what a way anyway. to prepare for the role to deal with all these little kids. That's well, awesome. It is. It's. I mean, and plus, I got lucky because each one of them, with their own personalities and their own like super big charismas right. and like energies and like a complete ADD and like da 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 da. <laughs> To be all together all the time. I mean, our poor director David, who was lucky if he was even able to get a word there. Right. And but like, does he? But does he rely on you though at that point to to where? Because when when it comes to, a little bit, I, because when it, yeah, when it comes to I would. My own camera, no. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. but I I would. I mean, if, if it comes down to the fact, that, like you said, you're going to these events with them, they trust you. I would say, hey, can you do me a favor? I need these kids to be quiet for a second. Come on, this why I set up just, my shots. Can someone yeah. listen to me? And it's, like, it's it's fine. Can I get a co-directing credit though? Right. <laughs> um, I, I mean, yeah, in in that sense, yes. That's kind of what so, um, you know, little little Darla Faith, uh, who's my youngest, who you literally want to kidnap her no matter what. And, you know, David would come in, you know, David, he's Swedish, you know, so he's just very serious. And, like, he's, you know, he's, he's our boss. And, uh, and he'd be like, da, 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 you know, say whatever to, to her. And then he would walk away and she would look at him like this. <laughs> right, right. Which, which makes well the other thing. So and you're and so Cooper is Cooper as my husband. Yeah, plays your husband because like you had mentioned, to where you got to connect this bond with these kids. You also have to connect this bond with Cooper because it's got to be believable. It's got to be like totally. you guys together totally. because that was the thing. Is I believed I was like well, right away because I didn't know. Like I said, I didn't know are they going to be. Assholes. Like I didn't know if you guys were gonna be jerks. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. Know, I didn't so know, that like, to make you, it more of a, yeah, of a like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, 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 who are, and then, you know, we quickly find that that is not the case at all. That it's it's like you had mentioned before. It adds the heart. Um, but you and Cooper have to have that connection. So same type of thing. Did you? Yeah. You, you, okay. So yeah. you guys kind of go I out. Literally, and do I, I actually reached out to him first. I, I'm very much methody like that. Yeah. I'm a little annoying, and I have all this like questions of my history in a notebook and I said hey man uh, we just you know we don't really know each other husband and wife let's go to dinner can yeah. I buy you dinner so we were sitting over like bowls of pasta and I was like so uh, when did we fall in love um, <laughs> also because my, my character is Rosa Vasquez uh-huh. um, he's Victor Vasquez but he is not uh, Cooper is not Hispanic right. nor does he speak Spanish so we were like, how are we going to justify? Like, like do it, because I am, and I do in the movie say a bunch of words in Spanish yeah. on purpose, which was not in the script, but <laughs> David was like, it's fine, as long as PG-13, we'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so so we, we just, we build this whole history of, of how I came to, uh, also because the movie takes place in Philadelphia, right? So why yes. would I be from, say whatever, El Salvador? 
why did you end up in Philadelphia? Right. How did you end up in Philadelphia? How did you, yeah, right, right. So, anyways, what did you come to? How, how did you end up there? Um, well, my, my, uh, this is another thing that because of the whole, because, you know, comic book world, yes. mm-hmm. you don't want to step on anybody's toes and be like, so, no, I decided that I'm going to be this. And then you have hundreds of people being like, oh, I'm going to kill you because <laughs> that's yeah. not canon. No, this yeah. is not DC 50, new DC yeah. 52 right, and right, like, right, all right. this stuff, right? So what I created was that I was a foster child myself. Mm. And I think that's important because we both... We, we, you said say that in the movie, though, were, don't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think it's important because we understand <laughs> what it feels like to not have a home. And that is, you know, you can imagine it all you want, but uh, unless you live through that or, like, someone that has any, you know, addiction problem. Right. When mm-hmm. you talk to someone that has gone through that, they know exactly all the hurdles, you know, that mm-hmm. they have to overcome. And I think in this case it's similar. Um, so knowing that, I was like, okay, so in my case, um, I was fostered by nuns just because I remembered that family that I took care of in Madrid, that they were all nuns that right. took care of them. And they were really good. And then they, they transferred me to the same equivalent place in Philadelphia. I just made that up. Right. I don't know if there's actually a, <laughs> a nun foster home. I mean, maybe. And um, But me being coming from where I came from and not knowing anything about Philadelphia, I would just start to hang out with the wrong crowd. And Victor sees me or meets me and he's like oh she does not belong with those people and then we decided that he just kind of like saved me and like took me he fostered me. you almost yeah. and he almost like fostered that. me and like then we that. fell in love and then the that's great um, but we do have a clip Warner Brothers was nice enough to give us a clip and we're going to show the uh, we'll show the audience uh, here we go here's a little clip with uh, Marta Milan's with Shazam Woo. this tree's so sad H- hello got lost fighting in the bathroom Oh, okay, Freddy, sweetie, good night. Night, night. <laughs> Freddy, who is that? It's Billy. He's just, he's really tired and, and he has laryngitis. What? Laryngitis? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He's just really, really tired and he wants to go to Betty Bag. Betty Bag? Who's just Betty Bag? Just died. Here and then. All right, we are back. We are back. So the, the, there is the, there is a clip. We believe we believe because and we'll just be straightforward and honest here too. They they put they, <laughs> they, 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 the they didn't they didn't tell us what the clip was, but we believe we think it was the clip where. We think uh, it's from Shazam. Yeah, we think we think it's from yeah, Shazam. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's not Mary Poppins, you guys. That <laughs> no, I'm promoting. We, I'm pretty sure it was the clip that we were Even saying. Even though I'll be happy to be Mary Poppins three. FYI, anybody? Mary Poppins. <laughs> yeah. Did you see? Did you see the? No. Yeah, it was it was uh, it was enjoyable. I liked that. Emily Blunt was out of control, but um, she is just. But the clip, let's say it is the clip that we think. Was it that clip of the, her, him sneaking upstairs? Sneaking upstairs? Yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what we thought. So it's Shazam sneaking upstairs, and it's it's once again, it's being able to play. And that actually gets me into two questions I want to ask with the tone of the film, right? Because when you guys are filming it, it usually takes about a year before everything gets together and then it comes out. Literally a year, yeah. About that, right? So Wonder Woman had really been the first kind of DC movie to have this big, huge impact that the critics loved and everybody loved. It. I love Man of Steel it was a little divisive back and forth but Wonder Woman set this kind of brand like new tone like overall overall but it's approval. and a different shift because even Man of Steel was a little darker right this movie and, and, and there were darker tones inside of um, Wonder Woman and there are certainly things inside of this film that are like I would there's a boardroom scene is all I will say and, there's, and I go whoa they really they went there yeah <laughs> but the tone of the film 90% it's fun it's, it's bright. lighthearted it's bright, it's bright. and yeah. is there a lot of talk about that on set that this is kind of what we're what we're going for here um i i mean listen I, when i first read the script and again i had not gotten in the opportunity to read any superhero scripts before because i never did any superhero movies before yeah. this one you know but reading the script even before we got to to film it i was like this is joyful mm-hmm. and it's it's positive and it's optimistic and it's about Kids that you know are there for each other, and they find family, and and it's funny, and yeah. like there's all these things that I'm like, is it just because I'm reading a superhero script for the first time? Maybe Man of Steel, when yeah. you read it, was also like that, and then when it transmits into camera it's, uh, and into the screen, is different. But being on set, it was that times a hundred mm-hmm. of like running around, laughing, gags, even, you know, I had a scene of additional shoots with um, with, with Jack, Freddie, mm-hmm. back in December. I, did, I said, I don't know if it's going to be, I think maybe at the extra credits, but it, 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 one of those moments, because that kid is Will Ferrell trapped in a 14-year-old kid's <laughs> yeah, body. Yeah, he really is. Yeah. Mixed with Vince Vaughn as well. <laughs> so I'm always like, wait, first of all, slow down because... It, I want to laugh, but I have to laugh three sentences before, <laughs> and I, I don't have time to do that. He's just the level of 
brilliant in improvising and yeah. just joking. And so that was the tone constantly with all of us, you know, and then I don't know, you know, that, that scene, actually the, the one that they showed of Zach sneaking out with like, the cave and I'm like, I just, I can't talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> so I know. Like, we have a cave this with the boots. It's just, it's adorable, you know? But you know what works about it, though, too? And this is because I usually have an issue sometimes with movies when the humor is there to be, like, now we're just trying to be funny. Ha, ha, mm-hmm. ha, yeah. This fits in because that's right. how the characters are. Yeah. And that's how yeah. it, and it works because, again, the overall tone is big as a superhero movie. That's how it's pitched and that's what it delivers on. But it's, it is, you ha- you need to have that bit of, I don't know, I, I don't want to feel, this isn't a movie that should be serious all the way through because it's, it's still with because, kids. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, kids. yeah. I mean, it's, you know, big, like Tom Hanks, and I remember that, that that marked my childhood, and then all of a sudden there's so many winks at that movie, and and uh, which you'll see, yep. specifically the one. Yep. Um, but it, o- overall, when when we saw it, because we, we all went to see it together for the first time at the Warner Brothers lot uh, just a week and a half ago. Oh, really? It was the first time you saw the Hulk? Yeah. Huh? I mean, we I've, I've done ADR, so I've seen like clips here and there, That's but great. I hadn't seen it. Did it do exactly, was it exactly what you thought it was going to be? It, um, first of all, it's really hard to be able to watch it as an audience. And when you're so invested in the movie, when you're right. in so many parts of the movie. And, and you, you know what happened behind the scenes and all this kind of so stuff. So you're yeah. like, you're watching a scene, you're like, oh, I remember that yeah. day when yeah. blah, 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 blah. And I just wish I could just take myself out of that. But what I will tell you, though, is that everybody, we were laughing throughout the entire film and, and you know, laughing and crying and like, and like oh, this is it just so good, yeah. you know? Um, and but I did not expect it to be as funny because mm-hmm. it's it's funny throughout. Like I remember reading moments where you're like consistent, you know, yeah. Even Freddie's delivery of like you know why why so dark? I'm a, dis- a disabled foster. Right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Things like that, you know. Also, the way he does it is just magical. Yeah. Um, oh. But but overall in tone, it is it, not not only is it the first superhero movie that is kids for kids and that the superhero is a kid right. that is right. that is unheard of and that's that's what m- makes you smile the most at least for me but also the um, the joyful quality of it throughout it right and i think that's what you were talking yeah. about i think it's going to it's going to touch people differently you know it's going to detach itself from the general genre of dc movies in the past you know can, can you talk about your experience just as an actress you know uh c- coming here to the states from from madrid and working on all these other uh you know projects that were probably not as joyful you know like a lion <laughs> order or like a killer women you know th- th- those projects that you've done before like how different was has those been experienced in, in from shazam in general and did you expect you know first of all like were you scared oh my god is this movie actually going to be good or not because superhero movies you know are tricky yeah um well, I remember, um, well, for, yeah, I mean, um, I didn't know that it was going to be a good one. I didn't know it was going to be as amazing as it turned out to be, which yeah. is even, you know, a little cherry on the cake. It makes you go but, like this. Oh, thank oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I think I might be able to get another job after this, yeah. you know? <laughs> but, um, but I do remember, you know, the first day that I arrived for the wardrobe fitting at Pinewood Studios, which is where oh, we filmed cool. in Toronto, yeah. and I had one of those moments of, like, Pinewood Studios. Hitchcock film just yeah. in this, I mean, in London, but so there's that part of like, oh my God, it is, it's so much bigger than mm-hmm. I could ever imagine coming from Madrid, Spain, to mm-hmm. know that I was going to be in a movie like that, you know? But the reality is that at the end, at the end of the day, whether you're doing Law and Order or the show that I just did in Spain <clears throat> um, for six months and then doing a Shazam, when you walk on set, yeah, the set is massive and mm-hmm. the stages are incredible and the set decorations are uh, you know so huge and you have like 200 people in the crew and and the and cranes and you know the blue screens and all that stuff but when the camera rolls you just got to do the work right. mm-hmm. you just got to be present you just got to know who your character is you got to mm-hmm. deliver that you got to connect with your your co-stars everyone and, else just kind of disappears and, and you're just everything the character. else yeah. really it it really has to disappear mm-hmm. because if you let that sort of like water it water all that moment then you're not you're not present yeah. anymore right. you know? and were you familiar like did you grow up at all with comics or, or, or did you see any was this like your first one that you had to really research you know yeah, character yeah I did I mean I, I, Batman has always been my favorite right. and, yes. and Superman as, as, a, as a little girl and then and then I've seen you know my, my best friend is married to um, Thor okay She's Spanish as well. Oh, cool. And I had never seen, and I've, you know, I've known them since before they got married and before he actually got Thor. And, and I had never seen any of the movies. Not, so he was like, what, 
wait a second. You are my wife's best friend, and I'm on like the 23rd Avengers, <laughs> and the 14th you haven't seen them. And I was like, dude, Chris, I don't. I know you look like Thor, and you're big. <laughs> you know, I tripped one day in their house in Byron, and he picked me up. But like, you know, the thing, the next thing I'm missing Do is the hammer. Have you still and not seen the movies yet, the Avengers? I know. So, okay. la so last year, <laughs> actually, not until last year, I was okay. here, and then. Like, you're coming to Thor Ragnarok premiere. Oh, okay. That's the end of that. And I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. And then we were sitting, and I was actually kind of like, dude, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> and you're funny. And he's like, uh, I'm a movie star. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So, so I didn't really know, as you can see, not a lot. But, um, but then knowing that Shazam is DC mm -hmm. and loving Batman so much, I was like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's revamp DC with this, you know? Well, and it seems, and that's the thing, we've talked about this on this show, and we actually mentioned it in the side of this interview, too, that as you know, as we are very aware of, the audience uh, is not afraid to tell you if you either have messed up or if they love yeah, it, they I are think... vocal. So one yeah, of the they're things... They're very defensive of their, of their character. <laughs> very very much heroes. so. Mm -hmm. So is it a bit of a, like, you know, and, and, and everybody's aware that no matter what you're doing, you know, people are always aware of what the fan base uh, is thinking, as they should because the fan base is what ultimately pays the salaries, you know? Yeah. So For the sure. so the, the 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 question I have and when you guys are on set and you're thinking about it and then you start to see the the critic because the critics love this movie, right? The critics are loving it, the audience responds yeah. to people that have seen it. Early. And is that another one of those whew, Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, also because like I said when we saw it uh, the other day, I was like I I don't know. I just feel this is amazing, but I don't know. I mm -hmm. really don't know because of the whole being unable to detach yourself. Mm -hmm. So then when we start, we started seeing some of the reviews, we're like, okay, mm -hmm. okay, we were not wrong. We, I mean, I, I knew it was going to be special and different right. just but you because never of know. all. But you, but you, know. you actually yeah. never know, yeah. you know? So listen, I think for, for all, for me, I, I, I'm very spiritual and, and, how this came to be and the role that I ended up getting, not not just, I could have gotten, you know, Mission Impossible 23 or whatever. Right. But I got a superhero movie, but, but which superhero movie, with which, with what message, and this character, this role, that can impact so many children out there in the world, mm -hmm. it's, I know I have a mission in a way to transmit that, and I hope we do get a sequel and many more after two embrace, because it there are a lot of children yeah. out of in the world that mm -hmm. should be, that should have a home that don't. It works. You know? It works and works well because, like I said, like I went into that movie expecting, you know, like I said, um, uh, the, pretty the, much what the, you pitched. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but no, but also the pitch to where this kid who become I, I was familiar with Shazam. He becomes Shazam. He's got his powers of Superman, and it's going to be this relationship between these kids. There's going to be some laughs, and I got all that. But what I didn't expect and what was not sold was exactly what you what what yeah. you brought to it and what Cooper brought to it, and that's this element of family and this of like. I, I felt good afterwards, and I right? also felt yeah. It's it's, I, abli it's it's endearing, man. Yes, it's, it's uplifting, it's, and that's it's, good it to gives do. you hope. Yeah, especially when you're like it's, Zach Levi has a lot on his shoulders, obviously, because it's like Zach Levi is the name. Zach yeah. Levi is the guy. This is who. This is Shazam. This is the guy. He that, carries all the pressure. Yeah, man. everything. So you're and because he's a big geek and he, and he's he's been in the culture for a long time. You're like this is the guy you want leading it, but it's never about one person. It's always about the team you're with. It's always about the, the you got to have that synergy. And it's I mean, I'm, I'm okay with him being on, on, on all the billboards and be like, thank God that's not me because I'd be like, oh no, the hair, <laughs> oh my love handle. Right, right. So I'm like, let Zach do that with this red suit and I'm cool. Yeah, I'm cool. But, but I think it's it's those but, moments. But I'm his mom. You're, yeah. Right, right. And so did you guys have any interactions as well too? Because most of the scenes are with the kids, but is there a lot of interactions with, with Zach that he's on um, scene a lot of? On, well, what, that, that, technically the only scene that you'll see us is together is because you, you can never see me with Zach. Right. Because mm -hmm. then I would know that he's a superhero. Right. So it's always with Billy, you know. But uh, but you know, listen. But was on he on off. set? Like just kind of like. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, yeah, all the time, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we would be on set with him. Like you know, we would grab Cooper and I would be done with a scene, and then he'd come in at midnight at like minus thirty degrees uh, Celsius to yeah. shoot some scene with Freddie. Did you shoot some, Billy? Like, we shot in Toronto. We shot in Toronto. Uh -huh. Everything shot. Everything Much shot colder. Toronto. Yeah, everything Much shot. Much colder. In I mean, I live in New York, and I've always been you know getting used to. Uh, North American winters coming from Spain yeah. is like, oh, what? Not enough for Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know, please, yeah. let's shoot the sequel in yeah, Tahiti. Yeah, the moose like, yeah. Tahiti, St. Bars, Bahamas, I'm cool. Or Ibiza, where, where I grew up. But, um, but yeah, so like one, you know, I remember um, Zach being like, hey, you guys, you want to come to see us on set? <laughs> like midnight. Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah. It's like, <laughs> dude, it's Friday night. You don't have anything else to do. do Please it. come. Right, you know? right, right. So here we are supporting our body. <laughs> but it was freezing. And yeah. poor Zach with a, obviously had to wear this black cape for paparazzi because the, the the suit wasn't official yet. I remember when they when the pictures leaked and, it, and everyone was like, <laughs> and that, oh, come on, it looks ridiculous. It, does, like, it looks so bad. Time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they did it on purpose because they were like, we know it's going to look amazing once it's like all right. prepared. Let but, them talk. But let, let them let them criticize it for a bit right. and then be like, shut up with the amazing photo. Yeah. Um, but poor Zach, because the suit itself is like, me- it's like mesh. Mm. So... It's like being naked, pretty much, right. you know, because he doesn't have, um, I mean, he has something to, like, keep him warm, but, like, between that and <laughs> the ear mums, his ears would all be, always be so red. And we, meanwhile, we're all, like, in the in the tents with the heaters. Mm-hmm. He's, like, like, yeah. he's like, how you doing over there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, shut up, you're the star of the movie, right. suck it up, you know? <laughs> do, do you guys feel like now you're, like, you know, you're all the cast and the crew, like, you just, I'm assuming you feel like a family now. Totally, and, totally. And, uh, and it probably, I'm sure, it translated on screen. Like the I, hope, I hope it does. It does. It I hope it does, does yeah. because it's that's what we were going for, and I feel we we all got lucky because they're all amazing. But uh, you know, going on karaoke because I came to one of the escape rooms with us one day, and then my birthday was it's April, so we were still shooting there. And you used to do Broadway, right? Or you were um, on Broadway? I I did. I mean, not not singing because okay. Sag, Sag is a proper singer. Okay. Um, I am not as good as him, <laughs> um, but I try. And um, so, yeah, so for my birthday, my, my parents came to visit me in Toronto and we all closed a, a, one of those k- 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 Korean karaoke places. And I couldn't get a hand on a microphone because Faith would be like, let it go, let it go. <laughs> Meanwhile, my dad, who's like six foot tall, and he's like, what is she singing? I said, Dad, frozen, <laughs> frozen. You know, and then, you know, Asher would get and be like, because Asher's also a singer. Yeah. Um, anyway, so it's 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 actually hard to get in a word when we're all together, which is what makes family, I guess, well, real. It, well, yeah, yes, and the other thing is too, because this movie is going to make a boatload of money. It's going to do very well, and there will be a sequel. You know that there's going to be from your there, mouth to God's word. <laughs> it's, there are certain things that you can't predict. This is one of those things. It's going to make a lot of money, but one of the, one of the, because a lot of times, and as an actress, you know this that. When you go on these movies, and I hear this from a lot of people, is that it's almost like a summer camp, you know, to where you go, you have these great relationships, but sometimes you might not see these people ever again. You know, it's like you hope that you do, and you might have these relationships with these people that are close and deep, but you might not see them again. This is very different because you have this family that when you see each other, like like you just said, when you ran into the kids in the bathroom, it's like, oh my God, it's my kids. I mean, and and, and <laughs> yeah. then when you see the sequel, that actually enhances the performance probably for when the sequel kind of goes through. I think so. I mean, I, I, I told Asher when he came over, I was like, stop growing. You're like half a head taller <laughs> than, <laughs> you know, and the same thing with Ian, who's um, um, the, the, uh, the video games. Computer yeah, game, yeah, 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 yeah. And same thing. I saw him the other day. Uh, we had this event on Sunday all together. And I said, stop going. He's like, I'm not taller. You know, because, of course, younger kids are like, I want to be still a kid. You know, he's like, but you are going to grow. That's fine. Don't feel bad about it, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I guess because I do feel like family in that way, I, I'm like, oh, you're taller. You're skinnier. <laughs> you're, you know? And, and ultimately, like you are saying, that that will, if it already did it, when we started filming and we had spent, you know, not that time, not that much time together, I think by this by the sequel we'll be like, oh, get me, shut up, right. stop talking, you know. Yeah, and that's and um, the evolution of a family. And so. that's the evolution of a family. Well, exactly. They, look, Martin Milan's here. Thank you once again for Thank joining you guys. us, Shazam. And Shazam is out next next week, next week. But we once again for Collider to let everybody know tomorrow, March 29th, Shazam and IMAX. Collider is hosting an IMAX screening of Shazam oh. with a Q and A with the director David Sandberg and star Zach Levi. Ooh, where? So, uh, that it will be at the IMAX. Theater. I don't know if we can. Clyder.com. Amazing. Go, guys. Don't miss it. Yeah. So go and check it out because it is it is well worth it. And like I said, if you didn't know enough about the movie, hopefully you do now. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people know about this movie. You're ready to get yeah, going. A few so people. congratulations. Thank you, guys. Really thank enjoyed the film. Me. And thank you for joining us today. No worries. Thank All right, you. guys. Thank you for joining us today. And we will be back tomorrow. Listen to this. Martin Cove from Cobra Kai is going to be here tomorrow. That's right. Sensei mm. Kreese will be in studio. Cannot wait for that one. Make sure you check out the SchmodownLive.com. Get your tickets over there. Hilarious. Yeah, Apple Podcasts. <laughs> get your Apple Podcasts if you're Collider Live. Subscribe to Collider Video. And guys, go see Shazam next week. It's worth it. Peace Woo-hoo. out.
Denzel Washington. Yay! Yay! Denzel Washington. 